Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40,000. It's 2,000 points, Sisters of Battle versus Necrons. Right, so welcome to this 2,000 points game, Necrons versus Sisters of Battle. Uh, congratulations to Tom for getting this far with his uh, Sisters Force. Uh, we'll be facing the Necrons in this game. This is for a place in the Grand Final. Uh, of our Season 9 Battle Reports. A bit late coming through, uh, just with some disruptions at the end of the year, but playing the last of the games here to establish a channel champion. So, whoever wins this battle will go through to the Grand Final. They will face the Drakari. They've made it through to the Grand Final. Uh, so it will either be Necrons versus Drakari uh, if the Necrons win, or it will be Tom's uh, Sisters of Battle taking on the Drakari. Uh, to win the channel crown. We do plan to play uh, as a runners-up battle. So the loser of this game uh, will play against the Death Guard, Cow Space Marines. Uh, so they'll go against them uh, for third and fourth place. So uh, before we go through the list here for the Necrons, just call out the patrons at gold level. They get names shouted out at the start of all of our games. Uh, that's, so that's Andrew Swan, Chris Heim, Frank Fafecki, Jordan Russell, Justin Burton, Longbow BB, Luke Schwengel, Marcus Anthony, Maxfield Knuckles, Evelyn Huxley, Dave Humphreys, Tom Weeks, Carrie Kunkel, The Thrall of the Silent King, Nicholas Lucas, Patrick Nielsen, Paul Cook, Peter Almo, Ray Cross, Tyler Summers, The Artist, formerly known as Veej, Dylan Moore, Samuel Paninuri, Martin, aka Vagabond, and then Bruce Zhao uh, as well. Uh, and then we also have Scott Costello at gold level and Tyler Schwab. Uh, so names shouted at the start of all of our games and also a Patronic dice to use at some point during the battle. Plenty of Imperial players here. There's a few Necron uh, gold level patrons to help out with dice rolling as well. There's also silver level patrons. I'll call out their names at the end of the game. And you can check out the end credits uh, for all of those supporting on the Patreon page, including those supporting at bronze. And all the proceeds go to SSWG. It's split 50-50. SSWG, my local war games club. And then half goes to the camera and gear fund for the channel as well to upgrade uh, the equipment that we have here. And then uh, we also have Phoenix Lords, the highest tier uh, support for YouTube channel membership. Uh, four of them, Chris Comiskey, Martin, aka Vagabond, Michael Fryer, and Longbow BB. So names shouted out at the start of all our games, and they also uh, allocated uh, units during the game. Uh, so we'll call those out. Uh, once both armies have been assembled here, we'll allocate Phoenix Lords uh, to take over units uh, during the battle. So for the Necrons uh, here, running a double patrol, it's Mephrit Dynasty. Solar Fury is their ability, so at half range it's an extra AP minus one for their firepower and plus three inches to their range as well. Also unlocks uh, particular all or traits, relics and stratagems and so on. Uh, so for HQ choices, double patrol, just to get me that, there's four HQ choices that are required for this list. So first up is the Warden, uh, just across here. Uh, giving him the Conduit of Stars Relic. I've got six CP, 
So it's 12 to start off with, minus 2 for a double patrol, minus 2 for extra relics being taken, uh, and then minus a further 2 for Hand of the Pharaoh being played uh, here on Ramses. So uh, the Overlord here is going to be the Warlord. It's Ramses on foot, equipped to a Tachyon arrow and the blade for him. Uh, the Veil of Darkness uh, relic being taken for Ramses. Also, then on the Catacomb Command Barge is Taman Ra uh, across here. Uh, Re Relic Resurrection Orb for him, it's the Orb of Eternity. Uh, a Gauze Cannon for him, War Scythe, and the Warlord trait is Merciless Tyrant, so plus one attack and plus one strength for him. And then the fourth HQ choice is a Luminor Zerus, uh, just here in the middle. Then for troops, I need two, and for a double patrol, we've got three. First is a unit of ten. Uh, Necron Immortals, all with the Gauze Blasters for them. And then two units of 20 Necron Warriors. They're split 50-50, so half with the Gauze Reapers, and then the other 10 uh, with the Gauze Flayers. Then on to Elites, uh, it's the Scorpec Destroyers, a unit of six of those. Uh, I've taken the Plasma Site to go alongside them as well. And I've also taken a Hexmark Destroyer, uh, just there. Fast attack is Tomb Blades, unit of six of those, giving them shield veins, uh, and then the ability to take the 5 plus invun save being granted to those as well. Particle Beamers is their shooting weapon. And then finally, for heavy support, it's the Canoptic Doomstalkers, two of those uh, here for the Necrons. There are plans to add some or to make some changes here, to introduce some units and so on, uh, but it's a fixed list here just as we finish off our season uh, nine batch reports with the Necrons. But a chance for them uh, to go through to the grand final. This is the first 9th edition codex that came out, uh, but Necrons, I think they're still potent enough. Uh, and they've done uh, well enough here to reach uh, this stage of the campaign. But they're up against Sisters of Battle here. Tom's army is pretty good. Uh, we'll take a look and see what he has in his list. Two thousand points of Sisters of Battle. Well done to Tom for reaching thus far. But can his army make it into the grand final? Is the question. Uh, we'll let him run through his list. Okay, so 2,000 points of Bloody Rose. I have um, a battalion I'm taking here, and uh, the HQs are Canoness Beatrice, who is now um, slightly changed from the uh, previous game uh, because it was I was taking the, illegally the same Warlord trait twice, so I've changed it to um, Blazing Ire, which gives her a plus one attack, um, and she's able to advance and charge. She still has the Mantle of Orphelia, uh, which changes all damage to characteristic one um, that comes through onto her. Morven Vile, the auto take with um, Celestine, the auto take as well, so that's my three HQs. Uh, then going on to the elite choice, I've got three Paragon War suits with the swords and multi melters. I've got a um, sister um, Repentia Superior at the back with the whip. And then I've got two squads of nine Repentia as well. Um, they will be starting in the uh, dedicated transports of the two rhinos. For my troops choice, oh, oh another elite is my uh, Cel Celestians to go with uh, Beatrice, just to take a little bit of damage away from her. Uh, for the troops choice, I've got um, six basic sisters with a melter gun. I've got seven uh, basic sisters with a multi melter and a simulacrum. And then I've got six basic sisters with another melter gun there. Um, for my fast attack option, in fact, I, I can't quite remember whether they're fast attack or elites. It's the uh, Xerophins. I've broken them down into squads of five. I used to run them in a squad of ten and just chuck them in at things, um, but and they used to shred in the previous um, codex, but this time they're not they're not as killy anymore, so I use them a little bit more as um, objective grabbers and engage on all front grabbers. Mm -hmm. um, and then last but not least is the Exorcist. Uh, for the heavy support. Um, so that is my 2,000 points of Bloody Rose. Oh, just to mention, um, Morven Val is my Warlord, um, so she has to be my Warlord when she's on, uh, and I've paid a CP uh, for Beatrice to take that Warlord trait. Um, and I will be taking, um, very likely, just to take the Passion um, as my Sacred Rite. Okay. Phoenix Lodge? Uh, Phoenix Lodge, uh, Longbow BB for Morven Val, and uh, Michael the Flyer, uh, as 
Celestine. Celestine. So that's Tom's list ready to go. We'll take a look at scenario and deployment next to this battle. So we're going to play missions. Uh, we're going to play a mission here from Warzone Necmond, the new book that's come through. So it'll be a new mission from there. Uh, because we're just seeing out the, the season, we're going to keep the list the same. So we're not making points adjustments for this battle for both sides uh, with the new Munitorum Field Manual. So that we'll keep the list exactly the same as it was previously. Uh, and then to mention Phoenix Lords, so uh, Vagabond in charge here of the Scorpec Destroyers, so it's the Vagabond Destroyers, and then it's the Rootin' Tootin' Comiskey Cowboy here will be in charge uh, of the Hexmark Destroyer. So that's Phoenix Lords allocated to units. We'll go on to scenario and deployment next. So we are playing Abandoned Sanctuaries here. It's one of the new missions from uh, the Nakmund book. So deployment zone looking like this, 12 inches in uh, here on both sides. Necrons, uh, what we won the roll off and have elected to deploy across here. Uh, Tom's sisters of battle deploying across the other side of the board. There's five uh, objectives, one in the middle. Uh, home objective each and then one uh, either side in no man's land. So home objective here for the Necrons. One objective dead centre, just marked by the cat there from Space Hulk. Tom's home objective across there. There's a left hand objective on this side for the Necrons, or on Tom's right hand side, and then across here over on this side uh, is the fifth objective, that one in no man's land on the Necron on the Necrons right hand side. So for the objective markers that we're using, it was a Kickstarter project uh, that was a success and now it's gone on uh, to uh, pre-orders here for these. So available for Age of Sigma and Warhammer 40,000. Dead centre of the objective marker there. They're 40 millimetres, the official size for objective, and they're three inches precisely out to the edge. Very, very thin. So you can see right through to the designer that the battle met underneath. We simply slip them underneath the terrain or put the terrain on top. Uh, and then very useful for model count for objectives, you just don't even need to measure, just slipping the model on, counts as holding the objective or just out so you know exactly where the models uh, sit, so very useful uh, in that regard. And then they also come with an optional sticky tab that you can stick underneath and then that then fixes it to the mat so it doesn't move uh, throughout the game. Anti-scratch, anti-fingerprint coating on them also, uh, but I'll put a link for them in the video description below so you can get a hold of your own uh, set of these. They come in sets of six for Age of Sigma and 40k. So for primary objectives taken hold, uh, the control of one or more objective marker at the start of the command phase, this is turn two onwards, is worth four points, not five, it's four points now. Uh, if you control two or more objectives, it's worth another four points, and if you control more than the opponent, it's worth another four points on top of that. Uh, there is a second part to uh, it's primary objectives now, uh, which is the ability to score a few more points. So it's called Secure the Sanctuaries, uh, this one. At the end of each player's turn, the player whose turn it is scores two victory points if they satisfy at least one of the following conditions. So the first option is to control the objective mark in the centre of the battlefield, that's the one marked by the cat, uh, or they destroy at least one enemy unit that was within six inches of the centre of the battlefield at the start of their turn. So points available for doing that, either of those two criteria. And then on top of that, there's also five points available if you control the centre of the battlefield at the end of the game. So there's a major focus on the middle of the table, so expect uh, a real contest for the centre of the board. Will the Necron Phalanx dominate the middle of the board, or will Tom be able to clear a path and hold the middle ground? We shall have to see. So that's mission primaries uh, for terrain. Uh, pipe work across here. These four main ruins will play as obscuring terrain uh, and then the ruins rules for those like light cover and so on. There's some Munitorum armor containers dotted around the board, uh, the usual rules for that. A couple of uh, uh, barricades and so on dotted about the table also. But that's the terrain. We'll choose secondaries now. Each of us will choose three each. Okay, so secondaries have been chosen. Tom's gone for engaging all fronts, uh, retrieve Nakmund data, which operates a bit differently, but similar to... It doesn't quite roll off the tongue like Rod, does it? Yeah, Rod, Rod's <laughs> easier going. Uh, and then Leap of Faith. Um, yeah, so, so leap, of, leap of Faith is to do with Miracle Dice. I've never ever taken this one before, but I gain, um, I gain points for the amount of uh, Miracle Dice I use. So I think if I right. use two in my turn, I get one. Right. If I use two in your turn, I get two. Okay. Um, and then if it's three, I get an additional one. 
Fine, okay. Something like that. So they're, they're good, those secondaries, where you just get rewards for doing what you're doing anyway. So that's a good way of bringing points in. Uh, we've gone for Purge the Vermin, which is the usual uh, take here for the Necrons. That's the clearance of table quarters uh, from turn two onwards. Uh, assassination, Tom's got four HQs. Very quite difficult to get to some of them, but points available for picking them up or destroying them. And then grind them down we've gone for so that's destroying more units in the turn than tom destroys necron units three points a time for that if the necrons can do it that's secondaries for both sides we'll now start alternating placing units on the board so just to mention the battle mat and terrain that we're using in this game battle mat is by gamemat.eu six by four in size or they do a nice lot of different sizes here including the, the appropriate sizes for ninth edition games uh, we just mark the edge off uh, there with the piping and barricades uh, but they do different size mats double-sided mats lots of different designs uh, available from them and also pre-painted terrain sets which we are using uh, this ruin set across here so these larger uh, ruin buildings is one of their pre-painted terrain sets available from them as well so you can check out gamemat.eu for your supplies of battle mats and also pre-painted terrain Okay, so deployment's done. Necrons sort of sticking to the usual sort of phalanx setup they go for here. So double Necron Warrior squad, uh, one on the right, but it's sort of a central deployment of characters and then units spreading across. So on the right-hand side here for this squad, left-hand side for this one. None of the models crossing over to the side of the Munitorum Armored Containers. Then in the middle is the unit of Immortals. And then a cluster of characters across here. So Luminor Zerus, as uh, Ramses, the Overlord, and then also the Warden. On top of the objective is one of the uh, Canoptic Doomstalkers. The other one, just the way Tom's deployment here, and, and this empty objective on this side, we've tucked this one right on the corner, just with an angle across uh, the battlefield uh, there. Tamara on the Catacomb Command Barge, just to the left of the Necron deployment, and then just tucked behind the obscuring terrain here is... Uh, the Tomb Blades, both armies, well mostly Tom, but we've, some of our units we have protected them behind uh, the buildings which have proved quite useful here uh, for hiding units behind. The Scorpec destroyers or the Vagabond destroyers deploying here with their plasma site. And then in reserve is just the Comiskey Cowboy, he'll turn up later on in the game, uh, turn two onwards via Deep Strike. So then for the Sisters of Battle, a smaller force on this side. So one Battle Sister squad uh, and then a Repentia squad inside the Rhino. The main force is making use of this larger terrain piece. So Castellans here. Uh, the Celestians. Celestians, sorry. Yeah. Uh, squad there. In front is a Battle Sister squad with the Multi Melter. Yep. Yeah. And the Simulacrum, yeah. Okay, the larger squad. Uh, is Repentia inside the Rhino across here with the Canoness. Mm -hmm. As then Morgan Vale across here with the Paragon Warsuits next to her. Battle Sister squad on this left hand side also. Celestine the Living Saint uh, in amongst the ruin uh, also. And then the Exorcist just parked up the back as well. Tom has two units in reserve. It's the two Xerophim squads just there to arrive via Deep Strike. That's the two Repentia squads inside the Rhino. It's not too heavy on reserves, either of us here. Uh, just a couple of units uh, to bring on from reserve. Pretty much everything we have is on the table here. So this is it, really, Tom, a place for a place in the grand final. <clears throat> the Imperium's last hope. The, but, oh, good title for the battle report, Tom. <sighs> we'll, we'll roll up. I'd love to see Necrons make it to the final, but... Our, uh, both of our predictions were Necron Drakari final. When right. We, when we sat down and did the, when we did the draw, yes, both of us predicted Net Necron Drakari final. Mm, okay. So I can't call this game though. I uh, yeah, I, I think it's just an even even Stevens battle. We'll roll up two goes first. So it's Xenos scum. It's a three. It's very beatable. It's a one. That's a one. Tom's is good. He's yeah. deployed in a way that's blocked the vast majority of our firepower anyway, uh, and it may suit him. The Necrons get drawn in ever closer towards be, his good, force. Because if you're grinding them down, it'd be good to know what I've got to be each time. So you'll be going before me. So. I understand. Yeah, I grasp what you're saying. Yep. Yeah, okay. So a bit of pressure on the Necrons to get a tally, as uh, with kill points, and that may prove difficult on this first turn. We're going to the first turn of the game. We'll be the Necrons that go first. They may regret that. We'll see what happens. Turn one for the Necrons next.
Okay, turn one for the Necrons. There's not very much action from them this turn. It's more of a manoeuvre taking place here. So what we've done is uh, we blessed the front rank of infantry units, all plus one to their hit rolls. Not going to help out too much for shooting because uh, we ended up advancing with the Necron Warriors just to get to those uh, no man's land primary objective so advance roll made here nine inches in total just lipping onto the edge of objective just wary of what tom can send in if he decides to try and uh, stretch out a charge these have been augmented as well plus one to their ballistic skill scorepack destroyers have now occupied the ruin plasma sites gone with them characters clustering together we advanced with Tem uh, with ramses he's just tucked in there a regular move from uh, the immortals then uh, Illuminal Xerus has just moved up to here, just lipping onto the edge of objective. We've moved this. We've had no line of sight, so we've moved him across uh, to here. Still has no line of sight, but we've pushed him further forward just to get a better angle across uh, this way. Tam Ra's moved across to here. Necron Warriors again advancing and claiming the central objective. Tomb Blades remaining where they are for now. There's, they can't reach any target, and there's no point exposing them, so we've just kept them behind the terrain. And then uh, the Doomstalker, we have moved that across. It's just got an angle and line of sight and range to the Rhino, tucked behind the ruin on the other side here. But a scarcity of targets. Tom's uh, deployment has been very good, made the most of the terrain, and 90% of his army is nicely hidden away. No psychic phase here. Um, you did something, didn't you? Yes, a redeploy from the, yeah, brand, so the brand new book. The new, the new, a new stratagem from Vigilus alone. Um, I used it at the beginning of the uh, first battle round, Carry Forth the Faithful, and it was 2 CP um, to use it because the, the Rhino contains Repentia. Yes. Um, and I got to do a pre game move. Yes, so um, I had. I'm he... allowed to do that um, because there is issues with this particular. Um, uh, what's the name of the mission? The mission type doesn't allow you to move within the... Um, the no man's land. Yeah, but I kept... You stayed within his deployment zone. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I had an angle across here to that vehicle, so Tom's moved it out of the way. He wants to keep those rhinos in good shape so they can deliver their crazy lady cargo. Uh, we'll go on to... <laughs> no psychic phase here. A little bit of shooting, just a wee dash of salt. <laughs> a sprinkling of, a sprinkling of uh, firepower here. We're going to shooting phases for the Necrons next. So... We moved, so it's D6, range 27 for Mephrit Dynasty, so we are in range. Uh, so D6, the number of shots. Just the two. Nothing too scary. Fours for hits. We got a hit. Threes to wound. We do. It's minus two. So five plus. Nope. Not blocked. Happy enough for it to go through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. D3 damage. It's a wound. Huzzah. Okay, bit of damage on the right now. Uh, Twin Gores Flyers, they can fluff a flyer as well. So, uh, one hit. Five straw wound. Yes. AP minus one. A wound. Okay. No feel, no pain shenanigans going on with those. Okay, two wounds taken uh, on that Rhino. Now, we had lined up the, the Warden with his range 39 shots. So, rapid fire three with his Relic Conduit of Stars. Needing threes. He gets a hit. Uh, five to wound, strength six. Nothing from him. I wouldn't even know. Yeah, not going to command reroll. Uh, we advanced to ten Ras. No tachyon arrow. Forgot about that. That would have been damage six. That would have been quite useful. But no. Uh, this one's got no line of sight. Luminal Xerus. We'll check him, but I don't think so. Uh, I'll fire these. There's one Necron Immortal. Can see the back end of the Rhino. Range thirty-three hits. And doesn't wound. I think my firepower's going to finish up here. Yeah, Illuminal Xerus can see and in range. So D3 shots of him. Yeah, it's just the one. It would have been handy to get lots. Yeah, he does get a hit. This will be worth command rerolling this if it doesn't wound, which it doesn't. So I'm going to command reroll that because it's D6 damage. It certainly does go through. It's AP minus 4. 6 up, Phil. No, uh, in fun. Yep, it's Okay, this goes through. Need to burn a CP. And now for the damage. I could turn to one of the. Patronic Necrons, it was a bit early. We'll go for an undeclared. Andrew Swan, usually the first choice here for Patreons. It's a four. Nice, okay. Four damage comes through, and I think that is the end of that. No charges to take place. Turn comes to an end. We'll check for points being scored. I don't think there's any, but uh, we'll end the turn at this stage for the Necrons. Yes, yeah, so no points picked up. We haven't destroyed a target either uh, for 
grind them down, uh, but not much we can do. It's Tom's superior deployment here, making good use of the terrain. Certainly has limited the options for the Necrons. They've made the manoeuvre, just holding the ranks here, holding the line, steady advance forwards, claiming two central objectives. We'll hand over to the Sisters of Battle next. We'll see what Tom decides to do with his army. Obviously can't hold back, but how and where to commit is the question. How to try and crack open this chrome nut is the question. We'll go on to turn one, the Sisters of Battle next. We're on turn one here for the Sisters of Battle. So there's it's taken a while for Tom to make his moves. There's a bit of a conundrum going on here. Uh, Necrons have claimed two central objectives. Uh, it's tricky trying to get an assault to go ahead. There's problems with Overwatch, supporting Necron units that can counterpunch, the ability for the Necron front infantry units to pull back uh, and shoot. The Warden's positioned here within nine inches of the three infantry units across there. So Tom aware that if he does plunge in and try and tap out a unit... I'm running into a gun line. Running into a gun line. Back and shoot me again. Uh, yes, yeah. this is... Uh, it's the Necron's holding the line here and it's... Uh, they're forming their strength in numbers and by sticking together they are stronger uh, with their character support. So it's been very difficult for Tom here to try and find a way of uh, breaking in at this stage. So it's the patient hunter at this point I think for the Sisters of Battle at this stage because if Tom is going to go in it's got to be effective uh, and well coordinated but Necron's seeming to be holding the line together well at this stage at least. We'll go around the other side of the board and you can see Tom's manoeuvres here. So I'll report on this flank here, not much movement uh, here at all, just holding position at this stage. I haven't moved out onto the objective yeah, they just at this point. He's pressed into the terrain, not touching, <laughs> okay. just to try and stop. Bit of a bit of parallel parking going on yeah. uh, here, just to tuck in as close as possible. So it's, instead of committing forward, one of the options was to go right forwards uh, with Celestine living Saint, but it would have been a suicide assault. So instead, uh, being shielded by the Celestians, Yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, claiming this objective to hold that one. Uh, and then across here, sacrificing, Tom reckons it's going to be a sacrifice here, this Battle Sister squad, lipping two of them onto that objective to reclaim that away from the Necron Warriors. But that also means that I can't shoot them, because if I shoot any of them and kill a couple and they come back, all they need to do is put two more on there, and then he's to going reclaim to it. me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just... That, that, that ties my hands with that as well. Yes. So uh, it's good, it's a good... It's a good uh, Stand off. You think for a, for a semi semi final? It's, uh... Yeah. Uh, reversing up here, a lot of uh, driving skills <laughs> with the Sisters of Battle here, we've got parallel parking, reversing, uh, <laughs> and then we've got um, reverse around a corner, <laughs> that's why we've got all four, <laughs> okay, um, and then uh, reversing up here, just, uh, getting ready to shoot potentially I with this shoot, one, I with a stratagem, of line of sight, with a stratagem, um, where yeah. it is obviously you can't, so I want to yes. keep this hidden as much as I can. Fine, okay. So that's pretty much it. Movement done. Uh, so we'll go on to shooting phase next. So Exorcist, where's it going to go? This is uh, the, into this one. It's going to go into this. Because it blows up, you're in the middle. So. Yeah, no, there's five plus to blow it up as well. Um, but I need to need to get through it and run will save and hit it and everything first. So um, uh, 3D3 shots. Uh, so three, four, five, six. Right. Off to a pretty good start. Threes. All of them? All of them. And threes again? Yes. Uh, four of them. And I'm going to use a CP. Yep. Uh, to try and get another one through. Yep. Yes. Five through. Okay. Minus two. Are these D6 damage, yeah. Tom? Yeah. Fuck no, that's bad. You got four up, and you got loot rolls on your side. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Going to have to come on reroll. Um, we'll go p -p 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 Patronic here. I need Necron help. This is very important. I'd like to keep this thing alive. We'll go for Carry Kunkel or Thrall of the Silent King. If ever there was a Necron help. <gasps> no, stop. Sorry, don't usually. Cancel that one out, but there is a new there's a new Patronic helper here. It's Tyler Schwab, who is a Necron player with a reputation for rolling four pluses. Wow, that's him. Maybe. Yes, he done it in the last game, he done it in this game. That is right. a special dice. Two D six damage. I'm gonna call on any sisters players. Yes, there are, there are, there are definitely. Uh this one, Chris Heim is Sisters of Battle. Chris Heim and 
sisters or imperial. And he's imperial player and space room with no other kind of allegiances. So pure imperial plus sisters of battle. You couldn't get better than that. Okay. Uh, Frank for Fecky. Where's Frank? Black Legion. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, we've got. We're Black looking around. There's no, just looking at Imperial Grey Knights, Imperial Admech, but not Custodes, that's Nicholas Lucas. Where's Imperial Grey Knights? Nicholas Lucas. Yeah, we'll go with Nicholas Lucas. Alright, well. it's an Imperial Knights, Grey Knights, um, Admech. Okay, not. so, there we go, Rob. <laughs> yeah, Chris, right. Chris Heim. Chris Heim. Dark, oh, brilliant. And Nicholas Lucas. Oh! <gasps> Uh, can't use a reroll. Yes, oh boy, eight damage, ouch. Scary stuff. The double six would have killed it, but uh, good damage coming through, well done. Just out of curiosity, if, if you hadn't, if I'd had the other one, yeah, it wouldn't have died anyway, so it's fine, I don't feel too bad. Okay. So four damage, or four wounds left on that one, so it uh, has taken heavy damage, but uh, thankfully for the Necrons, it remains alive. I can't see it with anything else. Right. Um... And I don't want to shoot anything else over there. So that exorcist that is, is dangerous. That's my turn. Okay, and obviously no charges then. Nope. Very quiet turn one, very tactical turn one. Both sides trying to line up uh, here. So we, we now hand back over to the Necrons on their turn two. Their army is intact, but what do they do? Tom's not uh, come forward too far. And if we start pushing deeper into the ruins, uh, it will make life easier for Tom as he tries to push forward. So Necrons continued, uh, need to continue uh, here with caution, I think. But we'll go on to turn two for them. We'll calculate any points that have come in. Which is a six. Okay, so you, Tom's got two Miracle Dice in total at the moment. So that's uh, a six and a one at this point in the game. No points picked up uh, for him at this stage. That six was from the next battle run, sorry. I'm rolling, rolling in advance of the next battle run coming. We're just on the fringe of it. That's okay, that's fine. And then uh, for the Necrons, we did actually get two points because uh, the second part of taking hold, controlling the centre of the board, you get two points for that at the end of our turn. So two points to zero at this stage, very, very early stages at this point in the game. Uh, retrieve Nakamon data. Uh, it's it completed again. across there. Okay, so we'll end the turn now. We'll go on to the second turn of the game. Bit of a nail bite to this one here, but both of us a bit nervous at this stage. But uh, I think the Necrons just need to hold the line. We are in control of two primaries. E just the two. Tom's got two, thankfully, because that would have stopped all those extra points coming through with Celestine. So it's a good move from her. But we'll go on to turn two for the Necrons next. Okay, so turn two for the Necrons. Uh, real battle of attrition, this one. It's like sometimes you watch a football match and both sides trying to nudge their way to victory without taking too much risk. So that's the situation we've got here. It's got to break at some point. But Necrons... Uh, ooh, what's this? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, Necrons as uh, not going to break formation at this stage. They've barely moved here. So a few models more going on to the objective and just shuffling along to get our gauze. Uh, blasters in range. Yeah, it goes Reapers, the ones at the front. Uh, just to get a few more models in range uh, of the Rhino, try and pick some wounds off that. And obviously the objective is to try and clear those uh, that battle, battle sister squad off of that objective. We've pushed forward a little bit here with the score pack Destroyers. They've been augmented. Plus one to their Ballistic skill, the same as the Necron Warrior unit on the previous turn. Not the best result. Would rather have had plus one strength or toughness on those, but it hasn't happened. Uh, and then the Command Party just pushing forwards. Immortals in front. Uh, My Will Be Done has been granted twice here by Ramses to the Immortals and this Necron Warrior squad. And then before they moved, uh, Tamara granted it to the Necron uh, Tomb Blades, which have since zoomed off 14 inches, didn't need to make an advance. They've got themselves in range and line of sight of that Battle Sister squad just tucked on the corner across the other side. Haven't moved with him. I don't want to push forwards too far because of the Repentia squad, which could burst forth. Uh, and their Necron Warriors... Pretty much holding position, restoring a wound here of living metal. Tamra holding position, just holding the line. The other great bonus for the Necrons here is Purge the Vermin. Two table quarters will pick up four points for us at, at the end of the turn. So there is a bigger incentive for the Necrons just to hold the centre of the board 
and just to wait to see what the sisters do. There are some targets for us as well. Uh, eight points are picked up for primaries for us holding on to two. Uh, Tom held two, so we don't get uh, the extra four points for controlling more than the opponent. But that is movement done. We'll go on to the Necron shooting phase next. Okay. That's uh, another new strat from the new book. Yes, well, that's a very good, another good strategy. Fueled by rage. Fueled by rage. Okay, what it means, that's why you saw, you saw Tom's sneaky measurement earlier on. It was for a multi melter, which uh, the strategy will enable his models to shoot if they're slain. I do need to roll for it, though. Oh, is it? Each model, yeah. Oh, is it? Right, okay. Yeah, so Four pluses? Four pluses, yeah. Right. So uh, it's, not, it's, not it's not guaranteed. It's likely. Uh, 20 shots for Necron Immortals, twos to hit. I'm not going to try and adjust them in any way, we'll just fire them as they are. And we'll go for twos to hit, yeah, rapid fire range. These will be AP minus three. So twos. Oh, that was a one. And that was a one. Okay, so two have missed. Threes to wound. Yeah, well, there's lots here, Tom. There's uh, 16. <laughs> it's probably goodbye to that squad. Sixes. No, that was valiant. You could try, but they've been oh, they've been there you go. hewn down like a reaper's scythe. One, two, three, four. So five battle sisters, normal battle sisters. Four ups get to shoot, so three of them will get to shoot. The sister superior will get to shoot, and the multi mate <gasps> will not. Get no. To shoot. So that was not worth it for me. Shame. But I needed. I wanted to try. Yes. So that's still uh, two, four, six, eight volt of shots. Um, Ouch. Oh, that's a particularly nasty volley. Right, so eight uh, volt of shots will just go into uh, these guys. Uh, one, and three. Okay. No rent. Oh, no uh, AP, sorry. This is against uh, those, guys. those ones? Okay. Yeah, we've lost one, and I'll try and reanimate. This will be an insult if I roll a five or a six. I can reroll ones for Necron Warriors. And yeah, okay, one of them has been slain. And that, children, is why you don't break cover against the Necron gun line. They were sent forward. Scout ahead, Battle Sisters. <laughs> yes, Superior. <laughs> and then they just hear screams coming up. Oh dear, and sounds of electricity arcing across. And blue flashes from behind the building. And and then the comms full silent. Blue flashes? I'd say green. Oh, green. Oh yes, oh, sorry, Tom. You're right, okay. Or green or blue. Uh, it's caused trouble for that squad. Yeah, that's uh, nasty stuff from the Necron as uh, Immortals. That was them in the, the middle, uh, just shooting there. We'll search for the next target. So really, it means these Necron Warriors, whichever ones can see, we're going to offload our shots into the Rhino, I think we'll go for. Okay, so next bit of shooting phase. Necron Warriors, then all of their firepower. A couple of models can't see. Uh, no rapid going on with the Gore's Flayers. Uh, I've got all of the Gore's Reapers in range. So against the Rhino, we've played... Disintegration capacitors here. Sixes to hit. Unmodified sixes auto wound the target to help us get through against the toughness of the rhino. We'll go with the gauze flares first. So looking for twos. Okay, so three wounds come through straight away. One miss, and then we'll try and wound with these, name fives. Right, so four wounds come through. You can do those saves if you want. Those will be AP minus one. Three. Okay, three wounds come through. And then the gauze reapers. Now, this is where the trouble may occur looking for two sixes will be nasty enough if we get them we've got some that was a six we rolled over and then that one four we'll take away the ones and then we're looking for fives Need quite a good roll here if we're going to try and bring this thing down, which we get a few. I think we may struggle to destroy it. It's probably going to survive. Uh, it's seven. Seven at minus two. Yeesh. Six. Down to two. Two wounds left. Okay, good volley, but not enough, not quite enough to destroy it, the rhino. 
So the two wings left on that. There's nothing that can see. None of these models can see. Just the angle's just not quite right. So there's Minotauron cont containers across there blocking the way. Uh, so that Rhino can't be seen. He can't see either. Uh, he's actually got no target. No target here. Necron Warriors have got no targets. The centre of the battlefield, just nothing going on with them. So we're going to switch right over to the other side of the board. Uh, here to the Tomb Blades. They're going to offload all their firepower into that Battle Sister squad here. Plenty of shots to go in against them. So this is Particle Beamers. Uh, range 21, because of a plus 3 inches to our range for being Mephrit Dynasty. Uh, so we will go for uh, Talent for Annihilation being added onto this. That's unmodified wounds of 6, causing mortal wounds, just to try and make sure the damage comes through. This is uh, half the shots here, so three of the models firing. Needing 2s, because they've been blessed previously by Mr. Ra. 6 is to wound the mortals, or 6 is to hit? Wound. Oops. Yeah, for this one. Yeah. 2s to wound. So there's three mortal wounds. Four. No, it's capped at three. Oh, it's capped at three, so yes. it's three And then nine saves at minus nothing. So you can take cover. So you actually get twos. Yeah, I'll take the cover on the uh, Sister Superior. Just twos, look at this. Gone. Oh, she's, she's gone. And then no cover. Um, dead. And dead. Got them, okay. That's that squad brought down on that flank. Just Necrons uh, just picking a couple of targets that they can see and concentrating firepower against them. So really, that's firepower done because we can't see anything. We've got no, no target for this one now. Uh, there's uh, Celestine Living Saint across there, but I can't target her. She's got the bodyguard there, so we, she cannot be targeted. I can't see. Yes, we can maybe see the bodyguard unit. We'll check here. Some extreme lines of sight going on uh, for some final shots, possibly, from the Necrons. Yeah, I can see the, the bodyguard unit, so I'm going to fire at them. D6 shots. We'll go Marcus Anthony here for the number of shots from this thing. E6. And then we'll go for fours. So four. Twos to wound. Yes, four wounds, and then invun saves? Yep, six. Sixes. Block one. Okay, so three brought down from that squad. That would still protect her, though. Celestine? Uh, yeah, because they're It's any number of models. The amount of um, right. models okay. is just their uh, rule. Okay, so Celestine trying to droid firepower coming through. Uh, but, oh, she has. She's done well. She's still protected at this stage. So that's it. I think five powers done. There's nothing else to shoot with at this stage. We'll calculate points. We'll, we'll show you the points that we just scored to give you the reason why the Necrons are happy to hold the centre line at this point in the game. So we'll go on to uh, calculate points for them at the end of turn two. Yeah, so for the Necrons, four points picked up for Purge the Vermin. We've uh, got these two table quarters cleared. Uh, you've got the eight points coming for primaries. Uh, there's another two points for this one. Holding the centre, so we'll pick up two points for that, uh, and then two units destroyed for grinding them down uh, here. And Necrons positioned themselves again on three primaries uh, here in No Man's Land. So we'll end the turn at this stage. Uh, again, tough decisions to make for the Sisters of Battle what to do at this point. The Necrons are a bit closer, Tom's a bit closer to them as well. Uh, with the Repentia squad, what to do is the question. We'll go on to turn two for the Sisters of Battle next. Okay, so we've um, we'll cover Tom's movement. There's a bit of an interrupt going on here, but we'll, we'll cover Tom's movement here. His uh, moves have been made, but uh, the Necrons have made the last move here with the Kamiski Cowboy uh, here. But we'll, we'll go around the other side of the board and give you Tom's perspective as his army uh, now commits to the fight here on multiple fronts. So over this side, we'll cover over here first of all. So inside here is the Repentia squad inside the Rhine. Just going to stay tucked in. It's sort of cancelling out that objective. Bit of a standoff across here, which Tom's happy off. He'd rather do that than to move out, get blown away, and then surrender this flank. So they're holding the Necrons back across there. Uh, Celestine's moved across. Her bodyguard's moved up with her. Then moving back in across this direction with the Exorcist. Just to get within range of this one. Right, to fire across the other Cause, side. Because Morgan Vile's moved up and can take that one now. Right, so Tom's going to try and take out both of those. Uh, the Doomstalkers can try and take out both. Caness has pushed forwards. The intention for her is to burst through that ruin yeah, she and, move and advance as well. And she'll be able to charge. She can go after the Scorpec destroyers. So I'm confident enough that she can bring a good number of those down. Well, I'm uh, a bit confident. <laughs> <laughs> 
Particularly, we're not re-rolling wounds. We'll see what she can do. Repentia squad's disembarked. Rhino's pushed up, and the intention of that is to charge him with a rhino to absorb any overwatch and then send the Repentia in to dice through the Necron Warriors. Battle Sister squad holding the position, and did they rotted in the end? Or Nackmund? Haven't chosen yet. Yes, I haven't done that yet because there's a decision to make in just a moment. Paragon War suits uh, following up behind uh, Morgan Vale, moving up through. And they've got the reroll all and wounds on them from, from Vale. She's blessed them. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. So that's Tom's move. He then brought in reserves, and that was in the form of the Xerophim, which had turned up here. Preparing to perform retrieval at Nakmon data, the Necrons then went for a ferric interception here and brought the Hunter from hyperspace in to let loose of his pistols, Tom deciding whether or not to rod once casualties, if any, have been resolved. Uh, one CP for that one. It is the Chris Kamiski cowboy here uh, in the form of the hex mark. Destroyer. But this is huge now with the new rules, because that, yep. that would mean, yeah, I, if you can get me below three, I can't get engaged anymore, yep. and if you can get me below, well, anything below what I am now, it's going to make it super hard for me to rod, so it will yep. deny me a lot of points. So this is it's just, it's disrupting the game plan here, which is not healthy for the sisters. But I couldn't I couldn't do anything about it, I knew it was going to happen. It's sort of forced, yeah, it's tricky, right, so enig enigmatic disintegration pistols, I think they're called, range 18? Six of them from the six armed gunslinger. So looking for twos, reordering ones. So we'll hit. Uh, and then we'll go for twos to wound because it's strength six, toughness three. And I'm going to command. What's the AP? AP minus one. I'm going to command reroll this one. Failed. That was a shame. So we've got, we've got three CP left, five saves, minus one, ignoring cover. So five pluses. Fours. Oh, three up normally. Oh, okay. Yeah, armor save. So two dead, but then you get two more attacks. Yeah, two more shots. Two hits. And two more saves to make. Oh, four plus. Okay, yeah, so, so three brought down. So that has caused the um, disruption. Command re-roll to try and keep the model alive on a 50-50 four plus roll. Quite important. To help the rod help the engage. Um, four plus... Tom's got eight CP remaining. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try and do it. Patronic. I don't want to, um, but a loyal Imperial Patreon to guarantee the result. <laughs> uh, there's loads. If you're that angry, you can go for the Ray Cross dice. Uh, but Ray is. Yeah, I'm getting a bit angry. So where's the Ray Cross dice? Ray's here. But yeah. Ray is Nork player, Eldar player, Drakari player. Be careful, Tom. Tom's gonna roll anyway. That's a five. It's Imperial this time. So... Thanks, Ray. So two models slain from this squad. So then the decision to make now is whether to rod across there or not. Yeah, this probably got to go for it. Big, this is a big deal because I can't see you stopping my rod here. Oh, oh Nackmund. At any point. Oh, the Nackmund here. Um, and I can try and do this in later stages. So yes. I need to try. A Patronic. Um, <laughs> need, you need them. They're crying out to help. Loads of Imperial players. Who normally rolls low? Oh. Um... I'm going to go for Maxfield Knuckles. Maxfield Knuckles, undeclared. Who knows? Yes. Helps! Come on! <laughs> Thanks, Maxfield. <sighs> Says Tom, not me. <laughs> That's you right. Know, the, Tense. The, like, the thing is, <sighs> it, it takes away instant points. Yes, it's more... makes them not necessarily instant, which adds a bit more drama to it. Yeah. But that, I mean... That was a little so bit... So going to mark that up. So it's that corner there. Yeah. For Neckmund data, it's two out of four completed, just about by Kreutz Whisker. Movements complete, the cowboy almost uh, caused problems there. Uh, he's there now, I've put him in the middle so he can move off and fire in different directions, so I'm sure he'll prove useful enough uh, for the rest of the battle. So we'll go on to Tom's shooting phase next. Tom says there's a, a, a question here for the our quiz that we do sometimes, our trivia, 40k trivia question. So I did a command reroll across there for one of my wounds, but that command reroll was done on Tom's movement phase. Is that allowed? I think it is. But uh, if you know the true answer to that one, then leave it in the comments section below. We'll move on to Tom's firepower. I think he's got a fair bit lined up here. Okay, so it's going to be Morgan Vale. Uh, a correction there. Is Morgan Vale, the model that you blessed? Because it's infantry or character. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So reroll hit some wounds for her. Everything she has is going into the Doomstalker. With five wounds left, I think it's quite doable. Uh, hitting on twos. Rerolling for yourself. And wounding okay. on 
Two of you. We're doing on threes. Two. Okay, now what is this? Uh, this is minus two. Four plus seven saves. I'm gonna go Patronic here. Yeah, this is, um, I'd like to keep this thing alive. Now, Evelyn Huxley, anti-imperial. Ha <laughs> ha! And then Dave Humphreys, Nork player. <laughs> nope. Nothing. Um, command reroll. What damage is this? D6. And what else is to come? Like heavy bolt tree type shots. Uh, heavy bolt tree type shots, yeah. It may seem like a bit of a trap, but bear in mind, I do have a six to Miracle Dice as well. Oh, do you? Do you really? In which case... Um... No, go ahead. Do it. Seven. Yeah, she's dead. Okay. Do we blow up? But that's the heavy bottle shot's gone. I've just got a bad feeling about this roll. No, oh, it's okay, right, okay, we're gone. It's five pluses to blow these things up. Okay. So you killed two of my units, didn't you? So ah, them yes, them yes, them. grind them down, yes. Tom needs to uh, destroy one more unit, which I think is going to be quite doable. Okay. So, um... Just the way it is, this game. Some games are 40k are all gung-ho and, and flying into each other and so on. Others are more tactical, uh, which is what we're seeing here. But there is the added tenseness of the league here. Both armies trying to find their way into the grand final to establish channel champions. So there's, you can't blame either side for being cautious enough at this point. But it's got to break. The dam has to break at some point. Tom's going to try and break the dam now. He's running around from one uh, publication to the next. From one, book, from one book to another. <laughs> Tom, uh, why did you put one book at one end of the table and one book at the other? <laughs> Exercise, <laughs> yes. He's, he's keeping track of his steps. Yeah, I'm keeping track. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I'm just double checking. I want to make sure that I get it right with the. Um, da -da 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 -da. Any unit. Any unit. I need to destroy this unit from the army, destroys one or more enemy units. I destroyed an enemy unit, so yes. uh, Miracle Dice. Oh, Miracle, yep. Yeah. A one. A one, okay. Oh, so your morale's not going to be a problem this turn. Oh. Okay. Right. So, okay, so next is war suits, Paragon war suits. What are they going to shoot at? Uh, so they are going to fire into these guys. Uh, right. And I've got two for... Um, Storm bolters. So this this one's in rapid fire range with the storm bolters, but the other two aren't. Yes. Uh, so two two storm bolters each. Yeah. So we're going to go storm bolters into the warriors. Okay. And on threes. And on fours. A mighty three. Cool. Uh, four ups. We've lost two. And then the multi mounters. We're rolling ones for Val. Two's to kill. Yeesh, two. Okay, so four slain. Uh, so, hmm. I think I calculated that I should still. You still get it with a miracle? Maybe, yeah, miracle dice give me a seven inch charge still. So right, okay. I've taken those four. It's just probably not going to make any difference. Uh, and I'm going to try and reanimate. So, nothing. Nope. Okay, so those four have been slain. That helps because that creates a smaller tally to try and hack through uh, in close combat. So, uh, good enough result. Uh, next is the Exorcist. Uh, two CP being spent to fire the target out of line of sight. It's going into this one. 3 again. Uh, 6, 7, 8. Nice. Very, very good result. Going to get this thing, Tom. Going to bring it down. No, shoot a nine. Threes. Threes. Four. Okay. Statistically, you're grand. So I've got I've got a command reader on standby because I didn't didn't use it on this one. Uh, so here we go. Four pluses. We'll go Tom Weeks. Thanks, Tom. Uh, we'll go for Justin Burton, our diary player. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll go. For, oh, I don't know if to touch. Black Legion, we'll go Frank for Fecky, Black Legion. No, Ugh. okay, try and think of something more necrony. Was it three or four? Four up in one, oh. yeah. Peter. No, no, three or four, I got through. 
Four got through. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and then Peter Ammo. I ideally need to block this one. Peter Ammo. Yes. Okay. So two. Uh, I'll go for a command reroll on this one. I'm burning out CP here. I've got two left. Um, oh, yeah. I'm trying to think. I need my CP. I'll think about this one. I'm running very low on CP. I need the command points. I know I'm going to need the command points, so I'm going to leave it. So, Tom, you're free to roll 2d6 damage. I'll roll the first one first. You can go Patronic if you want to on this one. But... Mm. Here we go. Luke Schrengel, Imperial, diehard player. Five. Oh, oh, good result. That was a six, and I could have just tapped into that, and then Ooh. it instantly killed it. Right. Um, so then use the one up. Here. Use the one up on you, Miracle Dice. Um, <laughs> uh, there's loads of Imperial players. You've got. Um... I'll go Samuel Pellinari. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's good. Yeah. It's a good result. So down to four wounds left. That puts that one in a sorry state, uh, and in a position to be finished off on a subsequent turn. Right. Then I will go with. So you can see across this Celestine trying to drive through the middle. The main thrust is coming across on this flank. So I'm going to try and wrap around in this direction uh, to try and break through the Necron line. He can't attack on all fronts, but he's going to try and smash one of the flanks here at least. Which I think is a good move. He can drive me off of there. That will clear that primary as well and get Tom back into better tactical position as well. Both sides are stacked up with multiple layers of counteracting units. You've got yeah. Scorpec destroyers here. That's why Tom's going to try and preemptively get to them. Uh, but then also across sea, you've got Paragon War suits for Tom uh, following up Morgan Vale as well. So lots of uh, secondary units that can come up and join the fight. So you can expect a big smash up on this flank here. And how that goes may well decide the fate of Tom's sister's army here. I think that's my shooting done. Right. Okay, here we go. Um, this is the... I've got some pistols and flamers and things here, but I don't want to risk... Me dropping yeah. models away, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that is my shooting dump. So, into the. Right, well, charge. we've had tenseness so far. It's not going to go away. <laughs> this is this is the charge phase and close combat. This is the could be the make or break moment of this battle. I'm not going to overwatch. I've got three CP left. I need to save it for other stuff. Kaius is painful. In he goes. Guaranteed seven inch charge. Tapping out the Necron Warriors. And now it's. Uh, what are you going to do about the Repented? Roll for them? Yeah. <gasps> okay. Okay. On average, you should make it free. There's a good chance they'll make it in. That's, that'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. No props. Okay, so far, so good. Okay. In they go. Oh, boy. So the question is... Any models in? Yeah, I think. I'm just trying to think of what to do with the cannoness. Whether I should. Joins the fight or she goes after the yeah, Scorpion destroyers? I need to guarantee I wipe them, to be honest. Oh boy. Um, okay. And I can't guarantee that I get into the other guys. Well, take your time, Tom. Yeah, Tough I'm, choice. I'm, gonna go straight, I'm going to go into the wars. Yeah, I'm going to go into the wars. Seven. I'll do. She can hop through the wall if she so wishes. I can't interrupt, or I, or I can interrupt. I can't heroically intervene. She'll go there. Okay. Which means that they'll be able to pile in and hopefully get more attacks. Um, Celestine. So I could try an Overwatch here, but whether it'll make too much difference. Um, well, I will. I will. You have to. You can't just. Know. You've got to go for the charge. Here, I'm not going to Overwatch. Yeah. Six should do it. Yeah, yeah, we've been seven. <laughs> okay. Uh, a little bit reluctant, <laughs> but in she goes. And again, I can't intervene or do anything about that, so in they go, Gemini in tow. Uh, that's all the charges. Right, charges done. Everything's gone according to plan. Uh, that is all the charges, isn't it? Uh, I might try with Bart. <gasps> I'll try with Bart. Oh boy. Get okay, uh, stuck in. So she's going to need an eight. An eight. Tom's going for it. Oh, no. It. Come on, reroll. Tom drops to four CP. Nope. No, she doesn't want to go in. Okay, she's determined to be part of the second wave. So lazy. We'll go. She we'll should go. put a codex over there for her to be running to and from. Um, okay. 
So to fight with first. Necrons could interrupt play. Yeah. Cost us two CP to do it. I know, but you're warriors, aren't you? So I'm obviously going to fight with the Repentia first. <gasps> um, yes. So let's get them. Two. Yeah, they'll they'll all fight. Tom, roll that model around. Yeah. Tuck that one in the gap. And squeeze. Yes, you're fine. They're all in. Okay. So right. I will need to work out attacks here. Yeah, so the ideal situation is just a simple wipeout against the Necron Warriors. That would be the best possible result. Okay, this is this is all of the attacks. Yep. Lean fours. Fours, yeah. Okay. Sixes are good. Uh, so I'll steal those. Mm -hmm. And then there's not many fours in there. There's not many fours in there at all. Uh, so keep Tom thinks he won't get the wipeout. But and then re-roll him, fours. Oh, well, you're on to a winner here. So not necessarily. No. So why are you getting re-rolls? Because I'm Zella. Oh, it's built into the actual unit. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm going to take those two orange ones out and replace them with two red ones. Um, and then these explode. So right. I'm get five ball back, back in. in. What's JP minus? Four. Yeah, but you, you've done it, Tom. I think it's JP minus four. Yeah. Strength? Uh, I'll be on threes. I'm not going to... I can't. You surely you have surely done it. Home and dry. Uh, <gasps> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. ten. Done 11, it. Done 12, it. Done 13, it. Done 14, it. 14, 15, 16, 17. They're gone. Necron Warriors are blown away here by the Repentious. Well, it's the ideal situation for them just to hit the target at full strength, full amount of attacks, and they've been destroyed. You got 17... In that phase. So who was it that picked off those? It was your Paragon War suits picked yeah. off those four models that helped. Otherwise, I would have survived. Would have had a whole lot of reanimations. Killed a unit that phase. Um, two. Okay, that's a miracle dice coming in. But we'll remove the Necron Warriors from play. Good result. So that's the situation. Repentia bursting through. Rhino's made a move as well. Uh, the Cannoness, no point doing anything with her. But uh, Tom smashed this flank here, look, linking up with his forces. So well done, Necron Warrior squad. Gone. Good result, but not a chunk of the Necron army for sure. Now Celestine is going in against the Immortals. I could interrupt play, but 2 CP. I'd need my CP for other stuff, so I'm not going to try and interrupt here. 10 Necron Immortals to try and hack down with her. Hmm. Two sixes are good. Sixes, I would love sixes. How many wounds are these each? Two or one? Uh, one. One. Oops, lots of sixes, please. No sixes. Oh, tons of fives. Yeah. <laughs> sixes are two more wounds. Oh! Yeah. In addition? Uh, no, and then it stops. Right. Um, that would have been handy. Threes. Terrible. Just Terrible. Two. So two dead so far. AP minus. AP minus four. Right, yep. That was awful. The Gemini. Uh, two, and oh, minus three. Uh, sixes. Yeah, all blocked one, lose yeah, another. Not very good. Uh, reanimations. Five pluses. We resurrect one. Oh uh, yeah, one comes back. Let me... Yeah, okay, so we'll just stick it back there. There's no point doing anything else. Okay, so eight of them remain. Uh, we just fight back with those. So they've been blessed, so twos. And then we need uh, threes to wound, which is terrible. Just a two. No minus. Regular saves. Okay. Okay. Gemini's two up save. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Uh, let me just double check. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. No damage done at all. Uh, morale will be fine for them. Uh, Necron Warriors, no worry. No need for morale. There's no one left to run. Luckily, I stopped your grind. Yes, you did. You took out two units. Well done. And you've got yourself your engage in all fronts. Okay, Tom, well, that is a bit of a swing around there for sure. It... I have not got myself engaged on all fronts. Because? Because of the new rules. Uh, oh, no, I think it's vehicle. I think, let me just check. I think actually it might be... You do it with a vehicle. Uh, I think you do it with a vehicle or monster. Surely you must. Um, because I was... We'll check. Well, we'll end the turn here and we're going to give you a points total. We'll give you a score at this stage. Yes, end of that round for a, a medical dice. 
Okay. One, two, and three. So points been picked up. Engage in the front, Tom did get that in the end. So two points for that one. Uh, retrieve knack one data, two out of four. So four points for that one. Uh, Leap of faith, just the one point for that. And the four points picked up for primary objectives. So we are looking at a total of 11. Then uh, for the Necrons, it's the primaries have been healthy enough for them. Uh, plus the two turns of holding the centre of the table uh, has given us a total of 12 and then four points for purge the vermin but that's been interrupted now there's a, a heavy enough presence uh, of sisters of battle on this flank for the necrons so 16 11 is the score it's close enough have the sisters of battle done enough to get themselves uh, back in the fight and to start swinging the game around we'll have to see necrons can respond they do have units at their disposal uh, but there's some high quality sisters of battle units to try and take down uh, she is a pain every game she's a pain celestine living saint and she's there right in the center uh, of the board defying the necrons here and aiding and abetting this successful flank attack the battle's on it certainly has not been decided who will go through to the grand final i think the necrons need a good turn uh, here if they're to get themselves ahead once again we'll go on to turn three next for the necrons So Necrons, turn three for them. Uh, points have flown in or flooded in for primaries uh, for them. So we held two. Tom only held one. So 12 points picked up for primaries for the Necrons this turn, which is a very healthy amount. Uh, the game is starting to swing perhaps from end to end now. Uh, we have made uh, a manoeuvre here with the Necron Warriors and Ramses. So Valor Darkness has been used. Uh, so they've redeployed across onto that objective on the other side, uh, Tomb Blades advanced and moved across, entering the terrain. Going to try and flush out the Rhino and the Repentia squad on that flank. It's going to be tricky, but we'll try our best. We've advanced here, move this model onto this objective across here. We then used the ability from the Warden to pull back uh, the Immortals so they can shoot. They've been blessed as well. Uh, then we've moved back onto this objective with Illuminor Xerus. Temraz jumped across to take on... Uh, Celestine the Living Saint, the Comiskey Cowboy has gone upstairs here, the Hexmark Destroyer moving upstairs to rain down some firepower perhaps on the Repentia. And uh, the Wardens pull back here perhaps to shoot in this direction. Uh, and then the Scorpac Destroyers, they've been blessed, they're core, so they've received a blessing from Ramses before he moved, and they moved out to here. Now, tough choices, it's taken a while to move this turn uh, and decide what to do with the Necrons. Do we go after uh, Val? Val. Do we go into the Repentia? Do we swing them in to take on Celestine? Tom's got four CP, can interrupt play. So if we're going to try and go for two different combats, Tom's going to interrupt on one of them. And whatever target we go after, either of these three, 
Uh, it's potent squads that can strike well in close combat. So tough enough for the Necrons deciding what to do. But in the meantime, we'll go on to shooting phase for them next. So shooting phase, it's quite straightforward. Warden's going to fire across here. Uh, six shots, we're just in rapid fire, which is 19 inches for him. So five hits. Threes to wound. Mm, three make it through. Minus three. Saved. Uh, they've got five up ten buns. No way. They are Zerokin, so they get plus one to their uh, shield of faith. So, uh... <laughs> okay, well done, Tom. Excellent, excellent result. Okay, we'll go for the hex mark destroy. He's going to put some shots into them. We'll try and disrupt those. There's, there's so many tough decisions to make. Where to shoot and what to go after here. Looking for twos, re-rolling ones. Look at the gunslinger go. He's got all of his hits. I'm going to try and wound. Uh, five. five, yes, AP minus one. Uh, three dead. Four dead. Got them, he's picked them off. Well done. So more of a tactical choice there. I'm just trying to disrupt engaging all fronts and so on. Tom's still got it with other units, but it clears those out of the way in that corner. Yeah, yeah 62 in his mortals. I'm going to fire here and try and take out the rhino with these, just because if Tom's destroyed, he'll disembark and hide the models from this squad, and then they'll not be able to shoot at all. So I'm going to fire all six of them in, and, and we'll play Talent for Annihilation, looking for mortal wounds. Forced to hit because we advanced. <laughs> God dear, mate, didn't see that coming. Okay, so that's all those have hit. And then sixes are good, fives for wounds. So three mortal wounds straight up. That's the result we're looking for. Uh, and then there's already going to be uh, six saves at minus one. Three more wounds in addition. In addition, I believe so. I'll double check for you. You can roll three to start off with at minus one. And it's going to go anyway. Oh, minus one. Two. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone. Okay. Doesn't blow. Doesn't blow. Okay. So let Tom figure out how he's going to disembark with those models and what to do in the light of the Necron Warriors that have uh, just arrived via Veil of Darkness. So three inches. Yeah, you can stretch in that direction to some degree. There's no danger of any charges going on with the bikers. But we'll let him decide what he wants to do. We'll just catch his roll. One's a bad. There's three ones. Okay. So five will disembark plus the, or six will disembark plus the character. So in play for us at the moment, we have been using our, our command protocols. So we are using at the moment Protocol of the Undying Legions. Uh, so we regained an extra wound back for Living Metal. Uh, so we stuck two wounds back on uh, two. And the Coptic Doomstalker. So up to six with that one. Right, next. It makes sense to do it now. We'll do Tachyon Arrow across here into this thing. Uh, we'll go for a Patreon. It's Tyler Summers. We're looking for a two. We're then looking for a three to wound. A strength 12. Yes. Save minus five. Six plus in one save. Nope. And it's D6 damage. It's not the Relic one. So D6 damage with Tyler Summers. He says... Five wounds taken. That's a good result. Very uh, happy with that. Okay, right across the other side here. So we've, we've lined up all the firepower. So two uh, gauze reapers across here. Those gauze reapers are going to go into that uh, bodyguard squad. These remaining three around here are going to fire into the exorcist. And then all the uh, shots from the gauze flares are going to go across here. Might as well put... Uh make those four red as well then because their AP and strength make no difference so I'm right. three and have uh, like no save so. wrong together then yeah and it's strength four and strength five so still threes to win okay, okay so twos for hits all of them and then threes to wound oh, right so it's a case of eleven Gonna go red, bloody rose. Yes, no, stick to the tradition. Sixes. Sixes to block, so there's three. And then five plus, feel no pain. No. Yes. Five. One, two, three, four. One alive. Okay, so one left. Nothing else to fire at them. Interesting that one survived. There could be funny stuff going on with them from around, isn't it? They get models back? No. No. Miracle. But they're not going to run away. Okay, so you to keep one model. And then uh, just, we'll go Reapers into this, into the Exorcist, twos. Fives or sixes would be... <coughs> oh, 
all of them. Weird. Six. Minus two. Oh, no, surely not. Just burn. Oh, that's out of the blue. Gone. Ouch. Ouch, only, that was painful. Only Luke can roll I, that. It, it, well, uh, that was a little bit above average there, and then we'll go... <laughs> <laughs> we'll, go, for you. We'll, <laughs> we'll go for we'll go for Gore's Reapers across here to try and get rid of this squad. You have some turn up with this firepower here, looking for twos, and then looking for threes. Yeah, it's nasty here. It's eight at minus two. Luke was saying a minute ago that this is going to be a tricky game. I, well, it's just a, 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 a series of, of good results across here has made minus some difference. Two, minus two, yeah. So the fours are okay. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, they are gone. Right, okay, score to them. It's, it's a redeploy, vehicle destroyed, target destroyed, captured an objective, destroyed a transport, and then took out most of that squad. So that has worked out very well for the Necrons at across here. So I'll go to the Immortals next with their firepower. So one of them can't see, but the rest will go into uh, Celestine the Living Saint. Rapid fire, looking for twos. So we fell back, but it was a fallback move from him. There's no minus to the hit rolls, and then we've been blessed as well, so it's plus one, so we're on twos. They were augmented, by the way, to give them plus one toughness as well. From Illuminor Zerus. Sorry, that's a two, that's okay. And then threes to wound. Yeah, all of them. God, uh, so that's 15 at minus. Three. <laughs> There's a ton of four pluses being rolled. This is the Gemini squad. Uh, so, uh, one damage each? Yes. Gemini wound, two wounds. I think they are. So we are Gemini dead. Gone. And Celestine takes three wounds out of her six. Okay, right, good volley from the Immortals. The ideal world is to gun her down, resurrect her back up, and try no, and no, destroy no, and clip. No, 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 no. What do you mean, the no? The ideal no? world <laughs> is for you to gun her down, yes. and for me to roll a one, and then what? Does... forfeit the game. <laughs> okay, if she goes. <laughs> She's hard, yeah, it's hard to root out here, but we'll press on with fire pouts. We've now got Tamara. He'll put his shots into the face of Celestine Living Saints. Looking for twos with the Gorse Cannon. Two hits. The toughness on her is three. Mm -hmm. Two's to wound. Two wounds come through, right? So, Invon saves. One pass. Okay, uh, we'll check the damage. I think it's D3, so if you want to. Come on, re-roll that one. Nope. Gonna take it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll go Patronic on this one. I need my CP. For interrupts, yes, and other, other stuff going on. We'll go. Oh, carry Kunkle with Thrall of the Silent King. I think uh, they'll jump at the chance to bring down Celestine on a 5 plus. No, one wound. I could come on, re-roll the damage, but. Mm. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll come on, re-roll. A 33% chance we'll take it. Here it comes. We've done it. Okay, so wounds absorbed and gone. For all of the Silent King has helped bring down Celestine the Living Saint. So she'll remain there and resurrect on a two. Uh, in which case, Illuminal Zerus will put his shots. You can see through to... No, we can't. We can't go after uh, Vol because other units are too close. So no. Yeah, Tom says we can. Uh, the the block, blocking units have been removed, so we'll go for D3 shots. Just the one shot. Looking for a three, and missed with Illuminal Zerus. I think that's our firepower complete. So phase comes to an end. She resurrects, and we'll go on to charges. Okay, so charges have taken place. A little bit of intervention also. So the, the, the straightforward one was just to charge in uh, there with Tem Ra. I don't think he'll bring her down, but it's, it's going to take her on in close combat. Celestine, the Living Saint. So we've charged. Difficult choice where to go for charges. So we have stretched and split our charge between uh, Vile across here and then also the Repent. You're going to try and take on both. Perhaps we've bitten off more than we could chew. Infused Madness did go off. So plus one strength, plus one attack for them. They're on twos because they've been blessed because they're a core unit. So chance for the Vagabond uh, destroyers here to cause trouble. A must fight first of these. 
Uh, the ideal situation is to decimate both of these targets if we can. Heroic intervention has taken place. The plasma site charged in on 11. Uh, then heroically intervened uh, there with the cannon S. So we'll do this fight first. This is the big one. This is make or break here. Uh, if Tom repulses these and destroys them, then he can take the fight across in this direction. Or if the Necrons can deliver a hammer blow, then that could cause trouble for... What's this? 2 CP to fight on death with a Repentia. Oh, so if you die, you fight... Oh, you I don't have to roll for it. Vicious stuff. Brilliant. Okay, this is a real <laughs> real cinematic moment here. Uh, <laughs> there could be this melee that decides who makes it to the grand final or not. Uh, we've got a very, very nasty combat here. But a full squad of Scorpec destroyers slams into multiple Sisters of Battle targets. Okay, so we'll do our attacks into uh, Vol first of all. The Vol? Vol. Val. 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 Yeah. So this is the Hyperphase Reap Blades. We're halving damage, so these will become damage 3 to damage 2, rounding up. And then the damage 2 Threshers will become damage 1. So we're looking for twos because we've been blessed. Alright. So, so far so good. We are strength... Eight. Yeah, so it's going to... Are you not strength eight with everything, are you? No. What are the other ones? Yeah, I picked up all the dice. That is, that is okay because whatever weapon it is, it's going to be threes to wind. With strength seven and strength eight. Oh, threes. Take away those, is it enough? Damage one on those, damage two on those. So four damage two. Um, so that's already six damage. Okay. Come on, reroll. Um, yeah, Tom's on two CP though for the interrupt. Because you burnt those two, right, that's where it's been spent. It's on them fighting before they die. God, tough well, choices I'm here. See, I'm going to see what I roll with these four first. Yes, of course, yeah, okay. Uh, they are minus... Uh, minus three. Minus three, and the other ones were minus... Four. four. Okay, so... Um, You're going to survive. I have taken... Mm. Yeah. So I've taken six, taken seven. Yeah, yeah so leave it. Still alive. <laughs> okay. okay, fine, you're right, so you've survived and you'll happily fight back, no I doubt. Fight, fight twice. Rerolling will hit some more wounds. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Um, no yep, 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 okay, gotcha. And then we're gonna, f uh, oh no, 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 no. We're, oh, we'll fight against the Repenti here. Oh, it's a So, next, cross here, 15 attacks. Looking for twos. Good job they were blessed, so they are core, because lots of twos have been rolled. Twos to wound. Right, so we're looking at 11. So invun saves. Uh, 11 sixes. And Tom's just kept the squad alive, or s at least one member. Uh, then, so hang on, hang on a second. Two damage damages. two, yeah, so pairs here. So, uh, well, I'll just re-roll successful. You'll pick out the ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, I've, made, I've made one another six. No, they're all dead. Not all, not all. There's eight there. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, one's left alive. Yeah, one left alive. But before I remove them, I get to pile in an attack for the two CP that I spent. Yep. So I will do that. Yep, that one in there, that one in there. So they're all going to get to fight. Like so. Okay. I put Whirling Onslaught on them. It's my last CP being spent to try and keep them alive. That is a ton of dice, Tom. Looking for fours. Six is an extra hit. Uh, ex extra attacks added on. Oh, boy. Not a great roll for the fours. Scorpic Destroyers. They've slammed in. They have done damage, but they haven't taken out the character, and the Repentia squad are striking before they're removed from play. You can just sense that both uh, sides... Two, three, four, five. Both sides. I'm going back in, and then I'll take those two reds for that. Both sides are doing the, the, the utmost that they can. Uh, so, fours? Yes, would have been threes, but it's fours. Has it helped us? Uh, no, I didn't roll many threes at all. No, not really. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Okay, how many wounds do you reach? Three. One, two, three, four, five. 
and a bit. Five and a half dead. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I'm almost tempted to use a commandery roll to try and get a four. What's the AP minus? Minus four? Yeah. <gasps> AP minus four, so you get no save. If I get a four up, then I wipe the, the white pack. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, so I'll spend a CP. He is going to spend it, yes. See, uh, uh, I know it's going to stop my interrupt. Yes. But otherwise, you get to try and regenerate here. Why is that Thomas a tough choice? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna it's going to do it, right? It's four plus. It's got to go, Protronic. Um, Longbow is uh, there with Vile, so he can command them to do it. No! Dead. Ah! Six dead. Oh, oh, oh no! How to, I'll just do the resurrect roll to see what we would have got, just for interest's sake. Two would have got back up, so it would have been a unit of three. So that's both units of Repenti, I've got one left. <sighs> vicious, vicious stuff. Well, I, I thought this game might just sit the same way for the whole battle, but it's shifted. It's gone completely fluid now, completely broken up. We've got a proper semi-final on our hands here at Scorpec. Destroyers can be removed, and that, that plasma site, no doubt, will go. Uh, Cannes will bring that down, no doubt. We'll remove the Scorpec Destroyers. Good result. I think that's gone much better for the Sisters of Battle. Uh-oh, Necrons are certainly not home and dry at this point. So, uh, that was a bit of a clash of the... Phoenix Lords there, Longbow BB taking on uh, Martin, aka Vagabond. So Longbow was... didn't even get to attack. Oh, well, he, he watched. <laughs> watched the he Repent. He commanded him to hit them harder. Watch the, watch the Repent, you go absolutely ape <laughs> <laughs> against the Scorpac Destroyers. God, it was a whirlwind of gore uh, from both sides there, but uh, well done to the Repentia squad. So I'll do the Plasma Sight as I'll put it into that Repentia, the last model. It hits on a four. Uh, it's threes for a wound. It does get its Please wound. Ah! Oh. Why, why, why? Because I get miracle dice when you kill them. Oh, right, okay. I know it helps my grind, though. You oh, got, that's a good point, because... you got morale, though, I suppose, but... Oh, yeah, well, no, I'll, I've got miracle dice. Miracle, right, okay. Yeah, so you need to kill Celestine to get grind. Do I? Because once I've killed that plasma site, I've uh -huh. the same as you. Right, okay. Uh, we shall fight with Tamin Ra. Okay, here we go. Tamin Ra... Extra attack for Merciless Tyrant, Warlord Trait. Hitting on twos, it looks bad, but it's four have made it through. Twos to wound with the War Scythe. Three have made it through. Damage two. Just past one. Oh, I did <laughs> just pass one. <laughs> okay, four wounds yeah. taken. She remains alive with two wounds left. Uh, something else to point out, Tomb Blades, they were interrupted by the character across there, so Tom disrupting them. So Necrons... Formation's broken up here. They may have to play the game as trying to see the game through. Uh, Cannon S into the plasma, so I was just going to... And just survive on the board and rake the points in. Um, oh! Wow. Uh, it's minus four anyway. No, it's gone by. <laughs> almost. Almost. That was almost an epic failure. <laughs> okay. and then, uh, it would also die anyway because the Scorpex are dead. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Celestine. Celestine. Who's in charge of her? Someone. She's terrible. Someone's in charge of her. Uh, yeah, Michael Fryer. Michael Fryer. Another uh, six is Another two. Phoenix Lord in the thick of the fighting. Mortal wounds. <gasps> yeah. it's two more wounds. Okay. And then you can only be wounded on fours, so that's two through. Oh yes, for quantum shielding. Yeah. So two make it through. Two mortals and two can make it through. Okay, we've got a five plus in one. Double six! Aha! So we'll take two wounds. Tamin Ra <laughs> survives. Good for him. He doesn't destroy his target, but he's, he's held up uh, the target here. Does she have the ability to fall back and charge? Um, I don't believe so. Okay. She'll be falling back and hiding somewhere, I think. Yes, because of Assassinate, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, so that marks the end of the turn. Uh, no, yeah. no, we've got combats across here. Yeah. You get to hit me as well. Team Blades, I don't want to move them because I want to keep one model on the objective. So looking for threes, two hits, threes to wound. A wound comes through. I wound. take a wound. Wound taken. Okay, Tom can uh, strike so back. Down to, yep, just one on there. Uh, I get five attacks uh, plus one for Bloody Rose. 
and I am, I don't think she's zealot. No, I'm hitting on threes. Six is her extra hit. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's four extra hit. Um, and then I am strength user though, which is a whopping strength three. Yeah, time we dropped a dice. Uh, did I actually yes, you did. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, your toughness five. Yes. So fives. Uh, so just a two. Okay. Uh, and they are at minus three. Minus three. One damage each. Yeah, it's minus two normally for the neural whips, and then extra minus because I'm bloody. Red. You got one. I'm trying to resurrect him. We do. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> End of turn. Uh, any morale to resolve, and we'll give you an update on the scores. Morale. So, so I'm just going to double check. Um, I know I can't use miracle dice on on multiple units. multiple ones on thing. I don't know whether I can use like a miracle dice of a one here and a miracle dice of a two over. Right, going to check that. I think it might only be one per turn. Okay. All right, so points have been calculated. Necrons have surged ahead here. It's the battle for the primaries. That's been the key issue. The Necrons uh, picking up points primaries each turn has helped them get ahead. They're struggling on secondaries, though. Uh, so points scored this turn. 12 points for primaries on their turn three. A further two points because, again, we secured the center of the battlefield. Purge the vermin. We picked up two points for this table quarter. That rhino stopping us from getting that table quarter. The remaining character... And Repentia model across that side, stopping that one. Looking thin on the ground for the sisters, but they're helping to stop that from going through. Uh, and then, nothing yet for assassination. Grind them down, we've destroyed four targets this turn. The tank, the rhino, the Xerophim, and the Repentia score, which did fail morale across here. Tom Auto passed morale with a miracle dice across on this side to salvage them. Tom has destroyed two of my units, so 4-2 as far as... Grind them down is concerned to stop those points coming through. Tom needs to destroy two Necron targets on his turn. So we're about to go on to his turn. He's actually started his move already. Uh, eager to, to get on at this stage. The score line is 32 points to 11. Necrons are ahead. But there's still two... Uh, no, you've still, got, you've still got three turns. It's your turn three coming up next. I forgot Celestine was minus one damage for all that as well. Oh, was she? Yeah. Ah, so it doesn't right. matter because she's going to heal herself this turn anyway, but... It would have made a difference. Yeah, so this is why she's an absolute pain. It's minus one damage against her, so now damage one. Um, so uh, there's that. Then yeah, Tom's so played Healing Tears. That actually might have meant that she didn't die originally. Oh, right. So okay. that's my bad. It's a, this is literally game, so it's my bad. Yeah, rules forgotten. Oh, dear. Um, okay, so we, we usually just sort of... There's not much we can do uh, about that. I can't really go back on that. Okay. That was, my, that was me. I don't forget rules, Tom, so I don't really know. No, I don't. don't, forget <laughs> rules. No, no. don't. Um, like, uh, you know, like Thousand Suns with plus one to the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to I, did, I did say I did say to you as well in you my game. Can I not get plus one? Uh, yeah. No. Right. <laughs> so we'll, we'll end the turn at this stage. We do the best that we can, but uh, we are human at the end of the day, so uh, we do forget stuff. Well, you're human. Yes. I'm made of salt. Tom's a, <laughs> Tom's a salt. Uh, we'll go on to turn three now. The, the battle's not over. It's, it's getting a bit thin on the ground for both sides. But there is a chance the sisters of battle here. We certainly cannot say the battle is over for them. They could. Well, you got it at the, 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 last, at the very, very last against the Thousand Sons. Yeah. Yeah, so there is a bit of flair left with them, for sure. Some very elite units remain alive. And it could be those elite HQ choices that seize victory from the grasp of the cold chrome hands of the Necrons. We're going to turn three for the Sisters of Battle. Right, Sisters of Battle turn three. Tom did pick up points for primaries. He was on the objective across uh, just through there, so four points picked up for that. So character remains in close combat. Uh, Repentia models... Just to stop you from overwatching me, going in with the Repentia. Although... You he locks in already. CP left, I don't think. Yeah. Wait, did you pull back or not? You're still in? No, 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 she's, she's going to stay in. Yeah. Um, oh, and... Um, Repentia's going to go in. Repentia's going to go in. It's just one model, uh, but she's got the potential to yeah. cause real trouble for she that squad. Maybe, she could maybe kill four. Depends if lots of sixes <laughs> explode. Okay. Uh, across here, there's just a bit of an empty spot around here. Uh, this Battle Sisters squad's just going to sit. It hasn't performed retrieve Neckmund data, but it's quite comfortable where it is, so it could do it on uh, a later turn. Uh, Tom's going to do that with another unit around the other side. i, I got to feel this game's going to be really close. So, Celestine's pulled back. 
Paragon squads moving through. Rhino's moved up to here and tapped onto this objective, remaining in this table quarter. Seraphim have turned up here. Now this helps with Rod, and it also means that it disrupts my Purge the Vermin from coming through as well. So this is a very good tactical move. And then uh, Vol moving through here to take on uh, Tam and Ra. Now, did you play the shut down the Invon save? So I've, I've spent all three of my Miracle Dice that I had um, to allow Beatrice to activate her three inch aura of no invuns. So there's currently no invun on this. Yeah, where is um, she? She's just tucked just, in there. Just here. Yeah. And there's um, obviously going to be six multi mile shots coming through. With no invun? Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, but I need to roll for the rod here. And it goes off just. Just a six would have. Right, okay. So that's been achieved. That's going to bring some more points in. Now, the, Tom's doing well, on, or he's doing better on secondaries. But the problem is. Primaries is the issue. Necrons have been reaping a, a, a big harvest on there, and that's where their points have come from. Tom does have a few turns in hand. It's these primaries across here that will be crucial for both sides. It looks like both armies have semi-anchored the objective across here. The game shifted around, so this is a battle fighting across this direction. Necrons coming across from here. Uh, so really this is now the Necron home objective. That's Tom's home objective across there. The key battle will be for these central objectives. The Necrons can cling on here. They'll stand a chance of victory, but Tom's got some hyper-elite units marching straight for them. So the battle is certainly on. We have no idea who's going to make it through to the grand final. This is the kind of semi that we were hoping for. It makes for an entertaining and tense game to watch. The battle's dragging on though, we're <laughs> it's late in the evening. We'll move on, we'll go on to shooting phase next. One hunter killer missile into Tam and Ra. Three rolling ones for the cannoness. Ah. Uh -huh. Hits. It, it, what, the vehicles? It's not core and character. Ah, uh, good point. New codex. Uh, well, rhino, rhino, rhino's probably core. You reckon? Space Marine rhinos are core. Are they? Yeah. yeah. Learn Maybe something every day. Everything's Maybe good. Space <laughs> and I'm talking nonsense. Yeah, it's not cool. Okay. Uh, so, no. Missed. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So, then we'll go with... These are toughness six now, aren't they? They are. They've been augmented. Paragon War Suits are going to unleash their multi melters into Taman Ra. And then they're also going to fire, not that there's any point really because of your toughness, um, but the Storm Bolters as well. Into the Immortals. Um, oh, sorry, Taman Ra. Two. He's just checking for rapid. Uh, I want to that one. And then. Just two on each of the other ones. Right, so we'll go with the um, six multi multi shots first. Oh, yes, because they're two shots each. And they were blessed by Val, so they are. <laughs> that was a Luke roll. <laughs> uh, four, so. Yeah. So just the two, but luckily I'm re rolling everything because of Val. Oh. Uh, so that's um, four through. At minus four. Yes. Do you have a two up save or three up? Uh, three up. Do you ignore any damage? I'll check, but I think I'm clutching at Necron Straws here. Because of the range? Yeah. I'm gone, Tom. Long gone. He's destroyed. He's dead. He said, I've got no CP for any kind of resurrection shenanigans and so on. Tamin Ra's been blown apart here by multi melters. That is a, a message that's been sent to the Necrons here. Finally, the Paragon Warsaws do something. They've done something, yes. It's only been three games. That's good. Well, they've done something. Cheap unit. Yeah. All right, some Miracle Dice coming through on a five. Yeah, Necrons, one of the key HQ choices being brought down. Very strong statements been sent to the Necrons as they, they look on. Paragon War suits and Vile looking particularly strong. Oh. Okay, so. I can't hold these central objectives. Um, Not with them things lumbering hoping, towards me. Hoping you can't. Mm. Because Val has a. No way. <gasps> charge. And I've got a five, so she's automatically in. <gasps> and then she can fight twice. I can't overwatch. Yeah. Oh no. So let's. let's Go for it. Right, so the shooting is over. Yeah, I don't want to increase my range of anything, so we'll go with charges. Okay. Um, we'll go with the cannon S burst. Right, okay, shooting phase is, is finished. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, shooting phase is over. 
So Th Tom's made a charge here to add with the Canness, but a roll too low, roll of four. So they've not made it in against, or she's not made it in against the Immortals. Uh, but there's Val to charge, uh, which is guaranteed. I might CP, I might CP reroll her, uh, the Canoness's charge. You can do if you want to, yep. Um, Tom's got two CP. Every move is crucial at this stage. Um, two CP, reroll that. We'll let Tom think oh, this okay. one. No, no, I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. And then I'm going to spend the uh, Miracle. five. Yeah. And then roll a four. In so she goes. It's the golden lady. Yikes. Yeah, it's okay. Longbow BB, Phoenix Lord, leading the charge. Um, and then... Paragons at a... Stretch yeah, could do it. Well you may as well give it a go. Oh. No, okay. Okay. Is that it? I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Think right. it. Now she has this fight twice, once per game. I hope it's once per game. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Yeah, it's very cheesy. It would be very, very cheesy if a model could fight twice every turn. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just. I. I wouldn't even. I don't know. I wouldn't even play. I wonder. <laughs> I wouldn't even play against someone that had an army yeah. like that. Mm. <clears throat> oh, it's the army that's in the final, isn't it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, right. Nice okay, right. She's, gonna, she's gonna gonna she's gonna hack those down. She's gonna hack those down. There's ten of them to try and survive. No one's safe. Three up saves. Ten Top. of them. Yes, there's so, ten. I'm hitting on twos. So you're looking for sixes to pop. Um, does she gain the bloody rose? No. No. Right. And then uh, I am strength very high. Come on, toughness six. They've been augmented for such a time as this. <gasps> the grand yeah, final. Threes. It is threes. Yeah, but they've all wounded anyway. Five dead so far. No! <laughs> uh, it's not five dead. You've got three up save, haven't you? Yes. Oh, this is a tense fight here. Survive. Come on, because I'm troops. I can hang on to a primary. That's one more to wound anyway. In addition. Yes. And then, so there's one more wound, so one down. Yes. Who can't be resurrected. Oh, right, yes. And then five six-up saves. <laughs> Give me some sixes. There's two. Okay, then you get to um, attack me, and then I get to attack you. So we reckon the situation here is that one side of the mortal wounds which don't get to reanimate. I rec we reckon we do get more reanimations because Tom gets to fight again at the end of the fight phase. So it's like a separate lot of attacks come through. So uh, five pluses. <laughs> Two. Two get back up. And I will put them just back into the fight. I get to fight you back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's with seven. Uh, looking for twos because we've been blessed. Uh, fives to wound. Yuck. Watch her die. You should be careful. No, oh, she's fine. No minus. No minus, I don't think. Yeah, there's no minuses, it's okay. Take okay, that. So fighting back. Alright. So you want lots of sixes would be ideal. No, I get to be wrong. Okay. So another, another one. Mortal there. wound, yes. And then five more through again. Five. Yeah. Why is this thing not um oh dead are they? Um, five more slain. Get, uh, get back up. Reanimation, yeah. That yep. reanimation. Oh quadruple one. They're not ne they're not Necron Warriors, they don't get to reroll ones, I don't believe one of them can be returned to play. So that leaves us three <sighs> three models for that squad. So that's the situation we're in. A bit of morale to resolve. Tom can, yes, he can make his consolidation, so he'll go back in against them. Uh, but vitally, the Necron Immortals somehow have survived against those attacks coming through. How long we can hang on to these primaries? <sighs> it's going to be a losing battle, but time could be on our side. We'll, yeah. we'll see. Um, is that it, then? Two more turns left for me. Yeah. So we've got a bit of morale to resolve, and then we'll calculate points here. Okay, so we've rounded off the turn. We did uh, conclude the combats across here. So the Repentia hacked down two of the Tomb Blades. A wound was put on uh, by the character across there. I'm just going to attack you back. 
Yep. Forgot about that. Threes, two hits. Going against the Repentia model. A wound comes through against that lone Repentia. Failed and I feel no pain. Awesome. Gone. Thank okay. I'll have another miracle dice. Oh, I see. Oh, I won it. I've rolled. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh, right? Okay, so we've definitely got grind. So uh, Necrons have now picked up three points for that. So it takes us to 35. Uh, with Tom's extra retrieve, uh, Neckman data, uh, that's eight points for that. Uh, two points picked up for engaging the fronts for that table quarter of the Rhino, that table quarter across there, this table quarter with those, but not that table quarter because a lone character model can't pick it up now with the new rules. Uh, and then Leap of Faith picked up two points for that. So that gives Tom a total of 23 points. He has caught up to a degree, but we feel like the Necrons yeah. are a turn's worth of points ahead. Yeah. They may have just been able to reap. It's like a, a reaping that's taken place here. And that could be enough to see them through to the grand final. So sometimes you get a spectacular smash up, and then you just get one army that emerges from that. That's happened in this game to a degree, but also there's been tactical play just reaping points. It's a points-based game. The Necrons have played it that way, and it could be that strategy that sees them through uh, to victory here. Both sides have been decimated in this battle uh we'll press on we're going to turn four i think that's going to give us a good idea of how the game will finish but we're going to turn four uh now much of the the viciousness of the fight has been concluded it's a bit of mopping up to take place some maneuvers some points to bring in for both sides necrons just need to try and stay one step ahead and victory may well be there as we'll go on to their turn four next All right, turn four for the Necrons. We're discussing the game. They've possibly done enough. Uh, so six inches across here, just paying two for the pipes with Luminor Zerus. Uh, the lone Immortal just tucking around behind there. That's another two points going to be picked up for that. Twelve points picked up for primaries. Uh, moved into the ruin to fire through here with the Warden. Uh, the Gunslinger is going to sit where he is. He can fire in different directions. We'll choose what to do with him. There's three wounds on this Rhino to try and pick off. Uh, then Val here just on one wound left. So an opportunity to bring that character down. It's the Warlord, so there'll be four points available for that for Assassinate. We've gone up to seven with Living Metal. So we've swung around here, full move. Possible charge across here. Uh, and then maybe fire across and try and take out that character. Pulled out of close combat and onto the objective with the Tomb Blades. Tamra's made an advanced move, just going to uh, try and sweep around there. Uh, to go after her if she survives. And the Necron War is backing off, happy to hold on to that primary objective. That's movement done. We're going to shooting phase for the Necrons next. So we're going to try and pick off the character here. D6 shots. We'll go uh, Dylan Moore. Just the one. He's difficult. Krieg. Blast. Uh, we'll, we'll try and hit on a... F oh. <laughs> we will... No, yes, no, yes, we'll command reroll the number of shots. Yeah, I'm going to command reroll the number of shots here. <laughs> He's determined not to help the Necrons out. So just the one shot coming through. Needing a four. We do get the hit, though. Two's for a wound. The wound does come through. Is there an invun save? Yeah. There is. Yeah, Six up. All oh, right, okay. Uh, you can go Petronic on this one. Six up to keep her alive. It will deny me two points. Scott Costello, Blood Angels Guard, Town Alpha Legion player. Nope. Now D6 damage. I'll go Patronic here as well. Jordan Russell for the Eldar. Five wounds. Already on a wound. I think that should be the end of her. Now, that will give you how many points? Two points to purge the vermin and a character kill. So it's worth five points. So you're thinking of command rerolling a six plus? No. Okay. Doing some other shenanigans. Okay, we'll let Tom line up uh, any other possibilities here. Okay, so the decision can be made at the end of the phase. Yep. Over to use that as some strategy. Divine intervention, it brings her back to life. Oh, wow. Cost you 2 CP. Yeah. So Tom's weighing up whether to use the command points or something else. But we'll leave it as a decision that Tom can make at the end. It's of your turn, isn't it? Yes, turn four. So I'm going to do it. You are going to do it. Yeah, I think I probably will do it at the end because then if I spend two miracle dice in your turn, then that gives me more points as well. So I'm taking right. away from you and given to me. Fine. Yep, okay, uh, we'll go for... We will try and take out Morgan Vol. So we'll go here, rapid fire, two shots here, see if the Immortal can get his revenge. So he was out of combat because I pulled away. Uh, I didn't need to pull back, he wasn't in engagement range. So two shots, double six, that's some vengeance. Fives to wound. 
One comes through. Oh, no, Drop dice. It's okay. Oh, it's, it's okay. This is the actual roll. Uh, 18. Minus three. Uh, and then nothing you want to do about it? Um, That's going to no, get me. If I use the CP, then. I won't be able to resurrect the character. Oh, it's tough stuff. Well, four points to me. Well, I've Assassinate. Oh, yeah. That's it. Warden. And the Comiskey Cowboy. It's a proper crossfire. Yeah, so I think she's dead anyway. So the question is, well, there's a couple of things I can do now. I can spend a CP on her when she dies and give me D3 plus one Miracle Dice. Oh. Um, or at the end of the phase, I can spend two Miracle Dice and two CP to bring her back to life. <gasps> stop you from getting that. So I think what I'm going to do... This has been a game of tough decisions. I think what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to spend a CP to reroll the save. Yes. And then leave the CP to be able to do the stratagem to get the D3 plus 3 and just let, let her die, I think. Okay. So I'll try... Yep, she's fine. She's fine. <laughs> okay, right, she lives. <laughs> Take away one CP. <laughs> right, okay. Um, we'll we'll just hand over to the Comiskey Cowboy. Six shots, six pistol shots in the back, firing from the rooftop. Does he get bonuses against infantry? Does he suffer any negatives against vehicles? No, no just normal. I could do. Yeah, I could. Uh, no, I'm going to do the warden first. Right, I'll do the warden across into here, into this rhino. We'll stick to the sort of plan that we've got. So looking for threes. That's a good volley. Rapid fire. This is the relic conduit of stars. Five pluses are excellent. There's three. I'm going to check the AP minus on that. It could be AP minus. It's at least AP minus three. You can roll up to see what you get. It's two damage a time. Oh. Does it explode? No. Nope. No, rhino destroyed. Picked off by the warden. Okay. Tom's still got the objective. He's uh, got the Paragon War suits on there. Uh, Comiskey Cowboy then will go ahead. Pistol shots into the back of Val here. So give for twos. You're rolling ones. Strength six. Toughness seven. Five. Toughness five. Threes to wound. Yeah, now here's trouble. AP minus one. How many? Five. Uh, just take. Gone. So I get D3, so two plus one. Um, I'm spending my last CP to get D3 plus one Miracle Dice for her dying because she's my Warlord. Okay. So then that will give me three Miracle Dice. So the result that we've got here is the clearance of this table quarter. That was the idea of bringing the Rhino down. Okay. A one, a six, and a three. Okay. Beginners think that was maybe not the right decision to do that. Stop. This, this, as I said already, this has been a game of tough, tough, tough decisions. Uh, it's, we're going to fire the Eldritch Lance across there against the Paragon War suits. One shot, which does hit. It doesn't wound, and that's all we're going to do about that. Uh, five power from that one's complete. So shooting phase is finished. We're going to charge this one charge here. This is this one here. We're going to charge in and just to try and disrupt the squad as much as we can. So in it goes. The Canoptic Doom Stalker. We get three attacks, needing fours. And we've missed. That's it from. How many wounds have you that. got? We've got seven wounds left. You think you could do it? Maybe. Uh, the four. Tom will give it a go. 16. I get a lot of attacks. Okay, I'm just going to push. I don't get, I don't get the re roll anything anymore, though. Just tuck your models in for you so they'll get to fight. Yeah. Uh, so the base ones get uh, three attacks each. One, two. Okay, well, let Tom calculate what he needs here. Okay, so here come the attacks. Okay. Six is explode. Okay. That was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Mm. There was a three in there, Tom. That's it. Uh, and then... Those three added on, yes. Your toughness is high, isn't it? Six. Uh, so luckily I am strength four. Okay, so vital. Yeah, so it's going to double their effectiveness. Fives to wound. One, two, mm, three. We're not going to die. Three! Uh, minus three. Uh, four up in one save for containment field. 
failed all of them. All right, uh, dropping down to four wounds left. It's very much alive. The idea is just to stop them from charging. They'll be able to pull out and move, uh, and that will mark the end of the turn. But you can see the Necrons again spread onto one, two, three, four primaries. Going to pick up two points here. Uh, for controlling the centre of the ball once again. So we'll calculate points here, but it may well be the case the Necrons have done enough. OK, we'll let Tom make his move here on his turn four, uh, but calculating points. Necrons picked up another 12, another two. That's actually put us up another two. Forgot to add that on, so I'll add that on just there. So that's on to the total. So another two points picked up, yet again, holding the centre of the ball uh, there. Purge the Vermin. We didn't get any, because across the other side of that wall, uh, is the Canoness, and she's in this table called Tess Necrons. It looks like we cleared it, but we haven't. There's a model just the other side, so no points picked up for Purge the Vermin this turn. Uh, assassination, bit of a floodgate opened there, uh, the destruction of the Warlord, plus the character over in the corner, seven points picked up for that. Uh, there's a potential grind them down. We've killed three targets this turn. Tom needs to equal that, otherwise we'll get another three coming through. But the total at this stage for the Necrons is 56. So they jump ahead again, and it's, it's primary objectives that's fueling that coming through. Uh, it's, it's the second turn of having 14 points coming through. So it's, it's, the, it's the control of primaries in this game that's been the decider. Uh, Tom on 23 at this stage. He does have a turn in hand. He will pick up four points for primaries immediately. So that's the total. Uh, and there's other points to chase as well. I reckon the Necrons yeah, have it, but well, we'll see. If there's a chance on Tom's turn five to clear objectives and claim primaries at the end of his turn. So we'll, the Necrons aren't home and dry yet. As she can advance and charge. No problem. Let Tom do his turn four move. Right. One. Yes. One CP gained. So Tom could spend a CP to pull out a close combat and charge. So he's going to. Holy rage. Holy rage. Yeah. So you can try and clear that one. So there is an opportunity. It's, it's a stretch, but the battle's not over yet. I'm not um, Tom's not going to give up, and that could pay off here. Tom's lining up multiple charges, multiple... Melters. Melters, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't know, Tom. I just... The uh, Necrons cannot celebrate yet. There's no way. Paragon Warsuit's moving through. Firepower thinks can be directed across here. A charge to flush him out. If that goes ahead, that's two primaries cleared. Celestine's now swung across, resurrecting the Gemini with her blessed tears to kill him. The Gunslinger's in trouble. I've got no command points left for any kind of overwatch going on. Abandoning this, a chance to charge in across here and destroy these to clear that objective as well. And that will put the Necrons in trouble. It means we'll pick up uh, only a few points for primaries next turn. And then Tom will have his turn five to pick up points at the end of his turn. Uh, is it enough? We shall have to see. Movement's done. Uh, Rod was completed. The final uh, Snackmund data in the corner across the other side. So the full house, of, uh, four out of four actions completed for that. We'll go on to shooting phase next. Right, one Inferno pistol into the cowboy. She has a pistol of her own. Wounds. She wounds. Minus four. Cover. Do you get cover if I'm in it with you? I don't think you do. There's water. I don't think you get cover if I'm in it with you. Oh, I see. Uh, fine, then I don't get anything. So it's d6 plus 2, 6. Mm, dead. Well, <laughs> that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens to cowboys sometimes. They get gunned down themselves. Oh boy, he's knocked out. Okay, this is an elimination process taking place here, an extermination going on. Uh, Celestine's Flamer. Yes. 3. Okay, I'll survive the flames. 2. I think it's minus one. Mm, two wounds taken, so he's still alive, but damage received. And the pistol from the Gemini hits and does not wound. Okay, so then we are going to go... Here we go, multi-melters. Uh, multi-melters and storm bolters, everything into him. Right. This could be very, very significant for the whole outcome of the battle. What is this? We're rolling one small mouse. <gasps> so that is... Mm -hmm. So that's four through. Yes. Forty-six. Yes. <laughs> Come on, reroll. Seven. You? seven. you can't fail that, Tom. He's rolling it. Done. <laughs> He's gone. Yikes! 
we're losing stuff fast. Okay. Um, the sisters have done this before. If you watch the previous battle with them, they swept in at the end of the game and picked up loads of points and got a victory against the Thousand Sons. This is happening again. A late shoot. surge from them. Shooting phase is now finished. Okay, they can't fall back, shoot and charge. Yeah, they can. Oh, shoot. Uh, no, fall back and charge. I think it's just fall back. Okay then, uh, on to charges. So we will go with, we'll try Celestine here. Mm okay. Six, so I'd say that's it. Yeah, she's in. She'll do it. In she goes. No problem. Gemini on the move. Uh, we'll try the counter as well. In she goes. Uh, so, three across. Six down. Um, now I'm not going to roll for the war suits. Why? Um, I'm going to use my nine for an auto charge into them. Oh, I was going to say. Right then, a miracle. Swing them that's in. Two CP done, and that's a charge. Paragon war suits to save the day. To clear one objective with shooting and clear another. Gonna spend a CP. Yes. Charge with them. Yes. Um, and I'll <laughs> roll their charge up. Any two dice, you're about an inch and a half away, so just roll a three. <laughs> in they go. Okay, so uh, pilot move made and attack's coming in now. This is quite an important one to clear this back objective. Six is going to pop. Yep, that was a six. That's fine, it rolled over, yeah, it's okay. On that one. Uh, so six back in, two, four, six. But there's fives. Yep. One, two, uh, that wasn't one of them, I don't think. Just five. Uh, five plus in one save here. For Shadow Loom. None. So that will be two dead, and a wound on another, and then we'll try and do reanimation, five pluses, which we do, we get one back. Three models versus five though. And then we'll do the uh, cannoness. Let me just double check if she's four or five attacks. Yeah, it's so not going to be getting grind this turn. Tom's uh, wiping out targets here. Blessed blade. Uh, toughness? Toughness five. The warden's dead. Uh, you would think. He doesn't stand a chance. Uh, so that's uh, toughness five, strength five. Yep. Uh, this is minus, uh, minus three for two damage each. Take him off. He's gone. So he's gone now. Talk about purge the vermin. I'm the one that's being cleared out here. Okay. All of a sudden, we've got hardly anything left on the board. Um, so, calculate point set. Combats have been resolved. Tom's destroyed the immortal across here. I took out one of these, uh, Zeraphim across there. And that's it. So, Tom's calculating points that have been so scored. It's not going to be. Okay, we're still not sure either way. But uh, there's all of a sudden been a bit of a rally here by the Sisters of Battle. They now dominate the battlefield to a large degree, just one isolated unit, Necron Warriors across there. Ramesses on the hunt for a character that's already been slain. Our objectives have been disrupted, we've lost that one, lost this one, lost that one, we only control one uh, objective with the unit across the other side. So we'll calculate points, we'll give you an updated score, and we'll figure out what would be scored perhaps on turn five to give you an idea of, of how the game will go. Tom reckons maybe the Necrons have still done enough, we'll, we'll do a total here, see what we come up with. Okay, so the, the game is close. Uh, for sure, at 62 points, well, it's 58 points here at the end of turn four for the Necrons, so 58 points at this stage. Tom's on 36, that's uh, the four points came in for primaries, engaging all fronts, retrieve NAC1 data was completed, so maxed out at 12 for that one. Leap of faith, some more points coming up to six with that, so 36, 58. But Tom has at a stronger turn coming up on turn five, a chance to pick up two points to the middle, to pick up th uh, 12 points for primaries, and so that will really uh, surge his score back into the mix, and it may just be a case of trying to pick up points for secondaries to maybe 
go on to snatch the game from the Necrons. This is a tight battle. We do have to go on to turn five uh, to see this game through to its conclusion. But another close game here, uh, as both of these sides are still in with a chance to make it through to the grand final. We're going to turn five, the Necrons, next. Okay, so turn five for the Necrons, just trying to find points. Uh, so we've kept him where he is. There's a pot shot here against this character, this Cannoness. That's worth an assassinate. Necron warriors have shifted across. They've been blessed by Tamra. I'm going to try and hose these down. If I can clear and get rid of those, uh, then I'll be able to pick up Purge the Vermin in two table quarters. One and two. That'll give us four points just to try and edge us ahead to put victory beyond the reach of the Sisters of Battle here. But my, have we got a, a tight game and a tight uh, battle taking place. We'll go on to shooting phase for the Necrons next. So uh, we've lined all the shots up here. We've played Talent for Annihilation. Our last CP, so six is to cause mortal wounds. The intention is just to try and clear those. Uh, there's some Gauls Reapers that are in range, so that's the yellow dice. We're going to put those into the Paragon War Suits. We'll do those second. I want the mortal wounds to come through here. Uh, so Gauls Flayers, first of all. Looking for twos, because they've been blessed. Looking for threes. So one mortal wound. And four saves at minus one. Uh, four saves at minus one. Yep. Mm, still alive. We'll go down to the Reapers. I'll give it twos. And then a couple of sixes will do. We get one mortal wound comes through, and then another six saves to make of minus two. So it is an utter miracle that's needed to keep this one alive. All right, so target was destroyed in the end. It was close enough. And then we'll go for Gauls Reapers onto the Paragon War Suits in twos. Uh, strength five. Tough. Five. Fours for wounds. Uh, yeah, AP minus two. Uh, two, three. Okay, two wins. So then we'll go pot shot into the character. Uh, number of shots will go for the artist falling on his Vige. It's five shots, that's what we needed. And then we'll look for wounds or hits here, need fours. Three come through. Twos for wounds. Those have wounded. So invon saves required. You can go Patronic on these if you want. There's four Patreons left. Patrick Nielsen, Admech player, blocked. Paul Cook, Imperial, not blocked. And Martin Vagabond, Space Marine player, not blocked. 2d6 damage. Nope. All the damage is reduced to one with her because of her relic. Unbelievable. Two wounds. Oh, and it would have been. <laughs> it would have been 11. That's the most ridiculous the relic. Of the Emperor has repelled the damage away. Oh, okay, two wounds taken. Each time an attack is allocated to the bearer, just the damage checking. characteristic of the attack is changed to one. All the time, forever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mantle of Ophelia. has protected her. It certainly has. Right. Shooting phase finished. No charges to take place. Turn comes to an end. Uh, we can go on to Tom's turn or we can just calculate points that would be received. Maybe let Tom make his well, move. I need to see whether I can stop you getting grind. Right. Yes. Significant. Um, I don't like. I can get. Um, I can get max points this turn. I can actually get quite a few points this turn. Oh, you can? Yeah, we know you can. Yes, certainly um, can. But just to make it look close, but I, I can't win. Tom reckons he's out of it. We'll, we'll let him make his move. We'll calculate points. We'll, we'll, we'll end our turn and we'll give you a score for the Necrons just to show you what Tom's chasing. So on Tom's turn five, the total he's chasing is 66 points. We'll let him make his move. Okay, so on Tom's turn five, we've concluded the game. Uh, Tom's stretched and has tried to pick up as many points as possible, uh, but we reckon it is not quite enough and that Necrons have just about achieved victory but it's been very very close a late surge again from the Sisters of Battle almost brought victory uh, about form the breaking was across here on this flank they swept through and cleared the Necrons away uh, their army has been shattered uh, but they've managed to secure enough points to achieve victory so points coming in we'll, sh we'll show you the score line here it's all been uh, calculated out so Victory for the Necrons, it, what's pivotal was the control of primary objectives. Uh, so it was uh, 10 points plus 2 on battle round 2. Uh, 12 points plus 2, 12 points plus 2 again on 3 and 4. 
we did get those four points on Battleground 5, so 44 points of primaries. That was the, the saving grace there for the Necrons. Purge of the Vermin was disrupted, but it's still strong for the Necrons, 12 points. So that assassination, we killed a few characters and got seven. And then grind them down, uh, denied multiple turns. Well done to Tom for that, just three points picked up for that. 66 points to the Necrons in total for them. Uh, and then for Tom, so just that... That starvation of primaries, just four points to turn on battle rounds two, three, and four. Then the late surge on turn five. This is a scary bit for the Necrons. 12 points picked up. Uh, no, 14 points picked up for that. So 26 points in total. Engaging all fronts was disrupted. Uh, no points picked up for that on turn five. Uh, so six points. Retrieve Octarius data. It was disrupted, but Tom did manage to finish it and get the full 12. And then the leap of faith. Uh, it was disrupted, Tom kicking himself a little bit for missing out on some of those points from coming in for using Miracle Dice, but did get nine in the end of that one, so not too bad. And there was, we almost missed it, you, you also get five points for controlling the centre of the battlefield at the end of the game, so that was added to the total. So Tom... It's actually slightly closer as well. I think oh. I, get, I get two victory points for killing that Immortal in the middle. Yes, you did. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So that would make it even closer. Uh, I think it's either or. Yeah, so that was in the previous turn? Right. Yes. So I would have got the two points in the previous turn for killing the Immortal at the end of my turn? Yes. Oh, because I didn't count, I didn't count that, I got two for holding the centre at the end of that turn. Ah, oh. so we, we, either way you're going to add it on? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to push. So it would have been 60. 60 points, the final score, to 66. So. And I can guarantee you that it is, it's completely my fault for messing up Leap of Faith. Because I think I've I had so many plans of how to do it, and then just got started rolling and completely forgot to roll dice. Could it be complicated rules from Games Workshop? <laughs> <laughs> so sixty points to sixty six, a close enough score, but in the end, it was the Necrons who delivered or executed order sixty six. As, we, as, we, thought. as <laughs> okay. we thought, we did say we we couldn't call this one, and we have got ourselves a close battle here. So. Uh, congratulations for Tom for leading his sisters. It's a newer army on the channel. He has done very, very well indeed with it. Uh, almost, almost taking them to the grand final of our season nine battle reports. But the light of the Emperor, the hope, the light of hope has been extinguished. That flickering flame dies away here and cold hearted, rusty chromatron oh, mach <laughs> mach in. machines will go to the, the grand final. They'll have to take on the dancing, dazzling. Dark kid. I really like. I am rooting Necrons all the way to beat the Drakari. I cannot stand Drakari. Well, hang on a second. Who's going to take command of the Necrons then? I don't know. We don't. We, we honestly don't know. It's tough. So we'll have to figure out who's playing who. It's, it's two of my armies facing off. We'll, we'll try and figure out who's going to take command of each of those armies. Uh, but the grand final will be Necrons versus Drakari. And the runner-up battle will be Aaron's Death Guard against Sisters of Battle. We've never seen that combination before, so we've got a, a new combination to look forward to as well. The plan is to run uh, the runners-up battle over on a YouTube channel membership, so members can look forward to that one. If you haven't joined already, uh, then... Uh, hit the join button and select Aspect Warrior or above to enjoy all of the content. And then we'll bring the grand final onto YouTube uh, and conclude our Season 9 battle reports. That's the end of the battle. We'll call out names supporting at Silver Level, which is Darren Garder, Denny Wright, Peter Goodall, Zachary Lee, William Schwarz and William. Big thanks to them for their support at Silver Level. And then we'll choose units of the game. Perhaps a tough choice has been multiple units that have done well. So uh, Warriors are going to give it to them for the Necrons, just they take a beating in each game, but you can see a large unit of them survive through to the end of the game. Volleys of firepower from them was pretty effective in this battle. Uh, and then Tom's honourable mention to the Paragon War Suits, uh, late surge from them, uh, deleting units with firepower in close combat, nice tough unit moving through the centre of the board. And now be 30 points cheaper. Uh, right, okay, that's good news as well. And then, but Tom's going to give it to the Repentia squads. What they charged into, they caused absolute havoc. Uh, so nasty units, a very useful resource for the Sisters of Battle indeed. So that's the units of the game for both sides. A great battle. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.